What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another stream. Uh, today, well, today we're going to do what we always do. Try and uh, take over the world. No, no. Today, we are going to be doing what we usually do here on the David Rams channel. Going to be talking about veganism. Yeah. Right there on the t-shirt. Actually, this is a, a Master of Puppets rip-off t-shirt. Don't know if you can see the whole thing. You can buy them on my website, davidrams.com, if you're interested. And, uh, well, today... So I recently got into a bit of a, a bit of a to and fro, a bit of an argument, a bit of a debate, a bit of a, a bit of, almost a physical altercation with a, an anti-vegan troll, carnivore troll. So today we're going to take a look at that. This troll came to our protest and he was eating meat in front of us and holding meat in, in vegans' faces and stuff like that. So um, just to give you some context of what he was doing. Uh, you, you, so so basically, I'm going to show you how, how I dealt with that and I'm going to show you what the public felt about that and we're going to have a chat about it right here on stream. Once we've done that, we're going to look at another video that's uh, another spicy video. We're going to look at a couple of spicy videos, basically. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the more recent videos I've done and uh, some spicy arguments and debates that I had. We'll, we'll take a look at a video where a guy was basically, yeah, quite loud and quite aggressive and we got into a bit of a shout a bit of a shouting match we're going to take a look at that as well and we'll have a look at a couple other of my videos because we've we've well it's been a couple of weeks or so months or so where i've been posting a lot of different videos and some of them are pretty spicy some of them are just interesting and i feel like it's a good idea to do that and to have a look together right here on the stream i can see already we've got uh, almost 20 percent of the people here are not vegan welcome to the channel by the way guys this is the david rams channel as we talk about vegan stuff here uh, i'm a vegan been vegan for about 14 years now and uh, you're in the right place. Uh, this is this is a place to come and uh, ask questions about veganism. And uh, the videos that you're going to be watching with me today, uh, I think we, you find really interesting, actually, because you're going to be able to see what vegans say and, you know, how vegans talk to the public and then what the public says to vegans and some of the conflicts that we have as well. So stick around, guys. We're going to jump right into that very soon. We're going to take a look at uh, some meat eater who was shoving meat in vegans' faces. We're going to see how we handle them. Um, so we got Mike the Corn King. What's up? A friendo. How you doing, mate? Axel's here. Sved's here. Anime Man is here. Um, we got, uh, who else? We got Na, Na Gregoob, JP Julia. We got Annie here moderating. Someone called Michael Dorado. What's up, Michael? Nice, nice surname. Dorado is a cool surname. Um, and we got someone called Tonki who's just typing eat meat many times in the chat. Strange way to start a stream. <laughs> um, I, I'm confused. What are you trying to say there? Um, what else we got? Uh, we got uh, Mikhail, who also says, eat <laughs> meat. <laughs> Come on, guys. We can. We got to bring the IQ up a little bit. How about we get some critical thinking in the room? Uh, maybe you can say what what you don't like about vegans or what you've got against animals, for example. Because obviously, you mustn't like animals if you want to eat them. Uh, you want to kill them and eat them. So, you know, what have you got against animals, dude? Maybe we can start with some conversation. Hey, maybe give that a go rather than just spamming two words that don't mean anything. Uh, I recommend that today, guys. I mean, you can spam. I mean, don't spam. You'll get timed out and possibly even kicked out for spamming. But, I mean, if you're going to just type just two words or three words that don't mean anything, I mean, you could do that if you want. I mean, no one's going to stop you, but it's a bit silly, isn't it? You know, maybe put something, you know, have a conversation, have a chat, guys. They actually say something interesting. Um... I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll hang out for a little bit longer because, I, you know, I think the longer we, at the beginning, we do a bit of answer, answering some questions and stuff like that. I'll talk with you guys in the chat for a bit. And then as we go, I think that's when we get a lot more people jumping in and then we can start reacting to the video. Because I can see currently we've, we've, uh, we're just at the start now. We've got about 30% of you guys are meat eaters. So meat eaters, why don't you jump in the chat and uh, say something like, why don't we have a little, little chitty chat, have a little conversation. I'm checking the chat right now. So this is your chance, guys. This is your opportunity. One shot. Don't let it slip. What's wrong with the definition of veganism? The principle of the emancipation of animals from exploitation by man. I don't know, mate. That is a very complicated question to ask. We'll do that. Maybe uh, if you want to actually ask some more complicated stuff that maybe we'll be able to answer, stick around later on. Join the join my YouTube members team or join the Patreon team. I'm doing an exclusive live stream with them after this live stream. That'll be in about one hour, 45 minutes. Uh, that's 8 p.m. my time. I don't know what that is your time. If you want to ask some more questions like that, maybe we can do that there. Lance says, we should all be naked. Will you tell a lion to wear a dress? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say, lads. Maybe try and explain that a bit. I, I don't know if you're just messing around. Uh, 
Is it animal discrim discriminant discriminate to wear their skin coat? I guess what you're trying to say is, is it, is it bad to wear animal skin, like leather and fur? Well, I mean, think about what you've got to do to get that leather, leather or fur off the animal. You've got to kill them and then rip their skin off. So absolutely, I would, I would never do that. Um, even if it was bought secondhand, personally, I'm, I don't want to wear the skin of someone who was tortured and, and stabbed and whatever, shot in their head or gassed to death. I, would, I wouldn't want to wear it. And, and I don't... I mean, I can see why people want to wear it practically. I mean, if you live in a cold country, then some people want to wear fur. If you, if you need, if you want, I don't know. People wear it for practical reasons. I understand, but if you actually care about animals or if you're against animal abuse, then no, you'd find an alternative. And thankfully, there are many, many alternatives. You know. How should I convince my parents to allow me to go vegan, asks Divyansh. Divyansh, I don't know how old you are, mate, but it, it really depends on how old you are. So if if you're young like not an adult like if you're under 16 or you're under 18 you're going to struggle you need to try and appeal to the um you know appeal to the their, their caring side because they care about you right and to, i tell them if you care about me then please allow me to do this it means a lot to me try and appeal to their caring nature because obviously they care about you um if you're older than that if you're an adult and you just still live at home then you just need to lay down the law mate and just say listen i'm an adult and i'll do what i want and you, you can't stop me um I'd like for you to join me and be on my side, but if you're not going to be on my side, then, well, I'm an adult, and, I can, and I, that's my choice. I'm going to make it. You know, it depends on your situation, mate, to be totally honest with you, but I hope either, I hope that it helps you out a little bit. Um, Them RHQ says, man, you woke. Depends on what you define as woke, mate. I mean, what do you think woke is? Uh, I don't think being against animal abuse is woke, for example. Um, everybody can be against animal abuse for people who are the super anti-woke people who are making fun of all the woke stuff. They could they could be against animal abuse. Most of them are against animal abuse. And lots of people who are woke are against animal abuse. Um, so I don't think being vegan is woke because there are lots of vegans. There are, There's even in the UK, there is a conservative vegan party, meaning that they're a party, political party, they're right wing and they're vegans. So yeah, I don't think veganism is on one side or the other of these kinds of arguments, to be totally honest with you. Luke's asking, I've got a serious question. You're stuck on an island and have to eat somehow. Would you kill to survive and eat and dress? <laughs> I don't know what the dress bit means. Um, I don't. First of all, the, the reason you're bringing this up, I suppose, is, is why do you want the answer to that question? Do you think it means something? Because um, it doesn't mean something. Let me explain why, Luke. Because if you were stuck on an island and the only thing you could eat was the body of a human that had washed up. And if you didn't eat that human, you'd die. Would you eat the human? Of course you'd eat the human because you'd do anything to survive. We do a lot of things in survival. So yeah, most vegans would, would eat another person to survive as well as they'd eat a chicken to survive. Uh, you know, ask yourself why you're asking that question. It doesn't really mean much to say that, does it? You know what I mean? Because we're not living in that reality. There's a lot of horrible things that we would do to survive because it's survival, isn't it? You know what I mean, mate? But yeah, thank you for asking the question. I'm, I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm just giving you an answer that helps you to kind of like think about why you asked the question, you know? Um, because it doesn't really have any kind of practical meaning, does it? You know what I mean, mate? But anyway, feel free to ask more. Uh, and as I said, I'm not making fun of you. I, I feel like I answered that pretty fairly. Um, what is a vegan solution to invasive species like python and lionfish? Uh, I, I actually, off the top of my head, I wouldn't know, mate. Uh, I'd need to speak with the people who work on that in, in those areas, the people who are trying to deal with that problem. I don't really know specifics about the python or the lionfish. All I would say is we need to definitely work to to solve the problems like that, where if they're ca causing damage to whatever, the, 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 this, the problems need to be solved in, in, in ideally non-violent ways, the same way we solve problems with humans. You know, if, if one human, if, if a group of humans is using too many resources, we don't go in there with rifles and start <laughs> shooting them, you know what I mean? We look for solutions, right? So I, I would say the same thing in that situation. We need to look for solutions. Um, yeah, no worries, Luke, mate. I, I appreciate you be, you're asking the question honestly. And that's why I gave you an honest answer, man. Um, uh, exotic Paralysis, do you think there is any possible strategy to either convince Piers Morgan or at least totally debunk him to the point where everyone watching knows he is lost, including non-vegans? Uh, the problem is Exotic Parallel with Piers Morgan, Joe Rogan, and any of these people. The problem is, is no matter how much you debunk them, no matter how much you are right and they're wrong, they're the ones with the platforms and they're the ones preaching to the converted. Because most people who watch Piers Morgan and Joe Rogan, they eat meat. So no matter how much you try and prove them wrong, which you, you obviously are right, you're trying to prove them wrong and you are 100% right when you prove them wrong, doesn't matter because the majority of people don't want to hear your truth 
and they won't hear your truth because Piers Morgan and Joe Rogan reach tens of millions of people, possibly even hundreds of millions of people, and you'll never reach that because none of us can be Piers Morgan or Joe Rogan and none of us are going to get anywhere near that point. Do you know why? Simply because we're saying unpopular things. Most people don't want to hear what vegans have to say because it makes them feel bad, but they do want to hear what Piers and Joe Rogan has to say because most of the time they're saying things that make people feel good. That's why they listen to them. You know what I mean? So it's tough, mate. I couldn't give you a, any kind of breakdown of a solution to that. We just got to keep trying. Um, Divyansh asks, uh, are you currently bulking? At the minute, I'd say it's kind of like a 50-50. I'm not cutting uh, and I wouldn't say I'm bulking either. Uh, I'm not going overboard on calories. I'm doing um, about 3,000 calories and uh, about 150 grams protein minimum. So I wouldn't call it a bulk necessarily. But I mean, let me have a look. I mean, you can kind of, I don't know, see some, some muscles there, I guess. Tell me, you tell me, is there is there a bulk here? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing okay, but I wouldn't call it a bulk. I'm just trying to build muscle right now. Uh, but I'm trying to do it without taking on too much fat, so I'm not I'm not really smashing the calories like that much. Like I'm not. When I was bulking, I was doing like three and a half thousand. That was that was. Um, I felt like I was like full just all the time. So I'm not doing that right now. Uh, Cliff's asking what what is uh, Cliff? That's a question for a, a, a vegan um, stream, mate. Cliff, if you want to join the YouTube members team uh, or the Patreon team, we're doing a, a members and Patreon only live stream after this one. It'll be at 8 p.m. Um, my time, which is 6 p.m. UK time. But um, in this one, dude, I just try and stick to questions from, from that are going to help non-vegans because most of the people watching end up here being non-vegan. Actually, with 30% non-vegans here right now, 30% meat eaters, and I'm sure that number's going to drop as we keep going. It usually gets down to 50%. So, meat eaters, please ask some questions right now. Let's have a chat. All right. Uh, so, you, do you think it's Ed's... Do you think Ed going on Piers would be a good idea if I went on with my strategy? Well, my strategy with Piers Morgan, because Piers Morgan, he's got his strategy. All he does is brings up almonds and he brings up avocados and he brings up all the situation with bees. And I think as a vegan, all you've got to say, I and mean, all I would say is, is forget avocados and almonds, mate. Every single vegetable that we grow causes damage to insects and rabbits and all of our crops cause damage, right? So it's not like veganism. You go vegan and you just solve all the world's problems for animals. That's not what we're claiming as vegans. And if you're claiming that, you're not. it's not true, okay? Because going vegan it doesn't fix everything. But we're not going to be able to fix those issues that we have with growing crops, almonds, avocados, etc. before we fix the issues with animal agriculture. Animal agriculture exists, so that means that people all over the world are saying, hey, stab animals, shoot animals, gas animals, I want a burger. Until we solve that and have people realize that animals are worth defending, that animals are worth considering, and that we need to look at them and actually look at the ways that we live and try and make our ways better for them, we're not going to get people to change the crop industry, the vegetable industry, the almonds and avocados industry. There's no money there right now, and there's not, a mu not much attention there. Because people are happy, they don't care about animals. Well, they do, but they're happy. They don't care about animals in the food. So they're not going to care about plants either. Now, vegans, we're less than 1% of the population. We can't change the crop systems alone, but we could change the crop systems if we had more people on board. We're not going to get more people on board until we get people to turn away from meat, to turn away from dairy, to turn away from eggs and start to think, wait, wait a minute. I don't want to pay for animals to go into these places of violence and they stop eating all those things and they go vegan. And then they say, wait a minute. I also don't want vegetable farmers to be violent to animals either. Once we have enough people in that, in that space, big changes will happen and we'll be able to start positively impacting all of the crop farming industry and the plants and the vegetable farming industry. But it's not going to happen. One of these is not going to happen before the other. So I would want to get into that with Piers and basically point out that, you know, Piers Morgan, why do you claim to care about bees when you fund the direct mutilation and killing of all of these animals, billions of animals? Um, why do you hyper-focus on bees? Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't care about bees. He's just using that as, as a gotcha. Well, all I've just said is the explanation to that is, is that, you know, if I suddenly started trying to speak up for bees right now, or bees and avocados, I wouldn't get anywhere because people pay for pigs, cows and sheep and the billions to be killed. There's not all of a sudden going to say, well, do you know what? I love my burger, but whew, I'm not going to eat honey because I feel bad for the bees. It's not going to happen. Or I'm not going to eat avocados because I feel bad for the bees. It's not going to happen. We need a consciousness shift. And it starts with 
animal agriculture. It starts with stopping the meat, stopping the eggs, stopping the dairy, stopping the animal products. It starts there. Then we start looking into the plant products and how can we improve them? That's the second area. That's where we need to go after we solve the animal products. So yeah, I hope that answers your question, mate. Appreciate it. How do you manage your protein intake and is it necessary to take supplements as a vegan? My protein, so I'm actually pretty solid on protein. I, I do a couple of protein shakes. I actually do a protein powder in my uh, oats in the morning. And then my, my, my first meal of the day is oats. It has a thousand calories and I believe about 80 grams of protein. And that's meal one. So I'm pretty much like that meal is set. The rest of the day, I pretty much just eat nice and regular, nothing crazy. Um, eight meals with a TVP, soy protein, and the crumbled soy protein tastes really good. Very, very high in protein. I do your nuts and seeds and things like that in my meals, um, stuff like that. Some pasta, lentil pasta is really good as well. And I eat relatively normal. That first meal of the day sets me up really well. So I recommend that for anybody, guys, as a vegan, uh, as anybody trying to build muscle, but... Um, you know, if you're going to do if you want to do a vegan trying to build muscle, um, start off with oats, bang in some protein powder in the oats, maybe some chocolate protein powder, strawberry protein powder, something like that. Um, put some peanut butter in there, make it with soy milk, uh, put some nuts and some seeds, some flax seed, crushed flax seed, stuff like that. That is just a banging start to the day if you're trying to build up and trying to get more calories and more protein and it's a banging way to start. And it tastes so good. I mean, you'll feel full because it's almost a thousand calories. I mean, the way I do it anyway, I'm like eating it. It takes me about 15 minutes to get it down. <laughs> but it is a great way to start the day, guys. Great way to start the day. Hui. What else we got? What else we got, guys? Put my name if you want to, uh, if you want to ask me a question, I'll answer the question. Luke's asking, why should I be a vegan? What are the pros and the cons? Luke, nice question, mate. And I'll answer again. I'll answer you honestly. There's a little fly in here. Sorry, mate. Sorry, they'll fly. Can you not fly? I'm trying to do a live stream. So, Luke, uh, here's, here's the answer to your question, mate. Good question. Let me go ask the, answer it again. Um, ask it again. Why should I be a vegan? What are the pros and cons? So, the, the number one pro to you being a vegan, Luke, the one pro to you being a vegan, is that I know for a fact the way you're asking questions and the way you are here, you're against animal cruelty. You're against animal abuse. You are against violence to animals. I bet, Luke, I bet you're the kind of guy, if you saw a man hitting a dog, you'd be either going over there and getting involved or you'd be calling the police and saying, hey, someone's doing this, right? You would want to defend that dog, which I, most people would, which is great. The number one benefit to you of going vegan is that you personally are no longer responsible for, for, the, for paying people to do violence to animals who are just like dogs. Cows, pigs, chickens, all these animals, they have just the same feelings and emotions and they feel pain and they suffer just the same as a dog would. That dog that you care about, that you would defend. But instead of defending those animals, currently, if you're not vegan, you pay people to do horrible things to these animals, mate. In the farming industry, in the egg industry, the meat industry, the dairy industry, they do phenomenally horrific things to them. Uh, and then once they've done all these horrific things to them in the farms, you know, using their bodies and putting things inside them and giving them antibiotics, like giving, giving them drugs and injecting them with all sorts and forcing them to get pregnant and taking their babies away from them, all this horror. And as soon as all of that's over and then now the farmer wants to make more money out of them, they take them to a slaughterhouse where they're either gassed to death, they're shot in the head, or they put these electric things on them, or they put them in an electric bath that electrocutes them. And then do you know what they do after they've done all of that? They take a knife and they slash all of their throats open. So the number one, the pro, mate, is that you are no longer paying any of those people to do that. The number one benefit to you is that you no longer have to try and justify any of that. You no longer have to be someone who supports animal cruelty and animal violence. That's the number one benefit to you, mate. And, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, as long as, you know, now you're going to look at a burger, right? And you might still eat the burger, but you'll remember what I said and you'll feel guilty about it. You'll feel bad about it. The number one benefit to you personally is you don't have to feel bad about it anymore. You can eat a vegan one instead and you don't, you're not part of that system anymore. That's the number one benefit. The cons, there are cons. There are cons, all right? The number one con is that people are going to get upset with you because you've made a positive change in your life. People don't like it when you do something good that makes them feel bad because they know deep down that all of this violence to animals is wrong. And when you say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore, they get defensive and upset about it. That's the number one con, actually, is other people tr start to treat you in, in very weird ways. And it takes a little bit of time to kind of get used to that. 
It really sucks, honestly. I, I, I've i still, I've been vegan for 14 years and I still, you know, have bad memories from this, especially at work and work colleagues. And, uh, you know, it sucks, mate. It does suck. But at the end of the day, if you're one person standing up against everyone around you for what is right, what, what would you rather have when you're on your deathbed, when you're about to die? How would you like to remember your life? Would you like to remember your life and go, do you know what? Back then, I stood up and I did what was right and I've done it ever since. And I know I, and people didn't like me and they tried to pressure me and they tried to make me do the same as them and they tried to make me feel bad for doing something good. But you know what? I did the right thing and I'm proud of myself. Or do you want to be on your deathbed saying, I wish I'd have stood up for what I believe in. I wish I'd have stood up against animal violence. But instead, I just gave in to the pressure. I just gave in to what everybody else wanted me to do. I think we both know the answer, mate. I think we both know the answer. We both know that standing up for what is right You'll never regret standing up for what is right. You will never regret it. It's going to be tough sometimes. People are going to be silly with you. And it's not, it's not, you're in a world where people are not vegan and the world is not built for vegans. So yeah, there's going to be some inconvenience. There's going to be some struggle, but it is worth it, mate. It is worth it to do the right thing. It is worth it to be someone who stands up for what is right and not one of the many who simply just ignores this or makes fun of it, Right. Be one of the people who stands up and says, no, I, I'm not going to, I don't care if you make fun of me. I don't care if everybody disagrees with me. You're ignoring the truth. I refuse to ignore the truth. I'm going to face the truth. I'm going to do something about it. So I hope that answers your question, mate. I appreciate your question. Um, please feel free to follow up with any other questions as well, man. Uh, and I'm, I'll answer them, do my best to answer them for you. Div Divyanj says, thanks so much. I was planning to become a vegan for a few weeks after watching yours and Arvind activist video and I'm motivated to become a vegan. That's awesome, mate. The best place for you to start if you're motivated to start eating that way and start to, you know, buying products that way and changing the way you live is challenge22.com. Go to challenge22.com. It's 100% free. Those guys will get you kicked off and they'll get you on the right path, okay? So go there now, challenge22.com. As I said, 100% free. Go and check it out, okay? Um, shouldn't bodybuilding be immoral according to the vegan philosophy because it causes unnecessary death since you have to eat more food to bulk up? By that logic, mate, living is immoral. This is the problem with that logic. Uh, by that logic, you can't go to the shop. You can't even walk or drive to the shop because, you know, you, you, you'd need to stand, you're potentially going to stand on some ants or whatever. You, you could never drive ever again because you could cycle and cycling would, would probably have less damage. But anyway, less damage than that would be possibly to to arrange that one person goes to the shop and does all the shopping for all of the people in the location so there's less feet on the ground. You know, you go down a bit of a weird road at that point. Um, I guess you're thinking some kind of minimalist thinking or whatever, which is fine. You can you can think that way, That, but it's a, it's a separate topic to veganism. It's more, you're more into the field of, uh, it's more it's more of like a philosophy field as opposed to something re relevant to veganism. But maybe another time we can get into that. Again, it's a podcast topic. Um, it's more of like a sit down with someone who's more versed on the on the philosophies and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, we could talk about that maybe in, a, in, a, in some podcast at some point. Explain how veganism affects the environment. If you explain that it's ethical, I'll become a vegan. Explain how veganism affects the environment. Um, it will, it's regardless of how it affects the environment. It, it, even if even if eating meat was was really good for the environment, it wouldn't justify stabbing animals in the throat. For example, um, Shabba, if, if, if we wiped out a quarter of the human population, it would be amazing for the environment. Does that mean you're gonna head out with a gun and start popping people off because it's good for the environment? No, well, why not? Because it's immoral, because it's wrong. Now you understand. So regardless of whether a plant-based diet is good or bad for the environment, it, it wouldn't justify killing animals. As it happens, it, it, it does appear to be the case that plant-based diet, locally sourced, uh, can be good for the environment, actually. And animal agriculture is very, very bad for the environment. Uh, there's lots of people you could look on, look at about that. There's lots of videos online to go look at about that if you want to check that out. Animal agriculture is a big polluter. Um, it's causing species extinction. Uh, there's, there's, there's loads and loads of issues with animal, animal agriculture. But again, even if there weren't, it wouldn't make stabbing animals okay. You get what I mean? Cheers, Shabba. Appreciate it. Hope that answers your question. Um, right, what have we got? Uh, I'm looking for my name, guys. So, 
Why are so many people in the comments being rude towards the people who are not vegan? One person said go vegan or go home. Why are people doing that instead of teaching? Luke's asking. Um, Luke, mate, I don't know who they're responding to, man, but there's a lot of people who come here just to uh, try and abuse vegans. So they'll say mean things like, oh, I love killing animals, or I love eating meat, screw vegans, stuff like that. Uh, that's most likely who they're responding to. Um, it could be that they're not responding to anybody. It could just be that they're just putting go vegan or go home. It's just a silly slogan. It's like go hard or go home, if you know that. I wouldn't take it personally, mate. Uh, we, we just get a lot of people in here who like to, you know, say mean things to vegans. So vegans sometimes respond. But, you know, focus on me, mate. I, I'm talk You're talking to me, right? Uh, at the end of the day, right? V if, some if there are some mean vegans in here, that's fine. There are mean people everywhere, aren't there, you know? There are, there are mean meat eaters. There are, you know, it is what it is, man. Don't don't be swayed either way. Um, this is the kind of the beauty, and this is what people don't realize about vegans. We're not all the same. You're going to meet vegans who have different political beliefs. So there'll be, some vegans will vote for one person, while some will vote for another person. Some vegans will be big on being like bodybuilder or, or an athlete. Some vegans will be lazy and they'll actually be pretty fat. Uh, you're going to meet lots of different vegans. Some vegans will be the loveliest people you've ever met. Some vegans will be hippies who just get stoned all day. Some vegans will be business people who are, you know, straight edge and never touch even alcohol. You're going to have all a range of people. Um, and yeah, some people will be mean. It, it is what it is. I don't think anyone in here has been mean, though. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is it's YouTube, man. It's YouTube comments. <laughs> it's a YouTube live chat. You know what I'm saying? People, um, you know, people, people get excited <laughs> but yeah don't take it personally dude Joe, you, jake's jake has been making gross comments about eating burgers and bloody steak have you i don't know i didn't see that when did, did oh no that's that's jake there's different jake there's two jakes in here right no luke luke hasn't been doing that my bad this jake guy's been doing that yeah see what i mean people say silly things like that and and this is why luke that we you know you have to you have to um i don't know some people choose to respond in different ways all right, what have we got? I see this Shabba said, no, that just proves veganism is dumb. I think a varied diet with meat, vegetables, etc., is the best, not solely meat. I don't understand, Shabba, the, the point. Uh, if you're against animal cruelty, if you're against violence to animals, then don't pay for violence to animals. As it happens, it's good for the environment too. It can be. I don't see what else you would... I don't understand why you don't agree. Maybe you could explain. Luke says, uh, if I were to become a vegan today, what should I do? I would recommend you go to challenge22.com. It's a completely free website. They'll set you up with recipes and stuff like that. And it's, it's a really nice way to get started. The second thing I recommend you do, you could do this right now as well. I recommend you go to YouTube, go right where you are in the search bar and type in Dominion Documentary. Dominion Documentary. It's a documentary that will teach you everything you need to know about animal agriculture so that next time somebody says to you, hey, uh, Luke, why did you go vegan, mate? You can actually say, well, here are all the things that I've learned and this is, I'm against this and this is why. And then you'll know what you're talking about. That documentary is, is very valuable. It's uh, activists went and investigated many farms and they revealed all of the practices and everything and very, very detailed. It's a very good documentary to watch. And it's a tough watch. It's a challenging thing to watch, but you know, it's, it's challenge yourself to watch it. Right, I think you can rise to the challenge. Right? So I'd recommend that. Cheers for the questions, mate. You're asking very nice questions, um, very interesting questions. So, um, all right, Jake knows all of these. Is this, is this Jake troll being silly? Jake, the Jake troll. Listen, mate. If you're here to mess around, that's fine. Um, but you know, ask some questions. Put my name and ask some questions. Uh, that's pretty cool, but yeah, I'm going to have to speak with my brother first because we're close and I want to see his point of view, Luke says. Yeah, mate, well, you know, you could you could show your brother this stream, this conversation that we've had here, and that you could pull out the, you know, show him the segments that we've had the chat and see what he thinks. And um, for sure, man, you recommend him to come into a stream and I'll answer his questions too, no problem at all, mate. So I hope you uh, make the right decision, bro. What's something that most new vegans don't know? Something that most new vegans don't know. Okay, something that most new vegans don't know, I think, is that they think that if you just take away the meat, take away the dairy, take away the eggs, then that's that's being a vegan, right? And you're going to be fine. Everything's fine and you're going to be super healthy and everything's going to be fine. That is not true, okay? So, of course, we're vegan for ethical reasons. So, taking away those things is, is the right thing to do because we don't want to pay for animal violence anymore and those things come from animal violence. Right, great. 
But you, you can't just do that without replacing the calories, without replacing the nutrition. You'll end up being sick. And this is a mistake a lot of new vegans make, okay? So you've been eating one way for, what, 20 years, 25 years, if you're 25 years old, 30 if you're over 30. You've got to make sure that when you change your eating habit, when you change what's on your plate, that you're making positive changes and you're actually putting in new foods that replace the old ones. So for example, if you were going to be eating some kind of meat thing uh, and some kind of cheese and some kind of, uh, I don't know, some egg thing and then some vegetables or whatnot. And then you just, if you just eat the vegetables, take all that away and you just eat the vegetables, then you're missing out on where's your protein source? Where's your fat source? If you're just gonna, if you're just eating lettuce and some, some I don't know, some sweet corn or whatever, you, you really, that's, that's not nutritious. So where are you gonna get that from? Well, you can add things like lentils and chickpeas, which uh, they're, good, they're good for fat, they're good for protein, they're actually good for carbs as well, carbohydrates as well. Things like that, add in nuts, some, sprinkle some nuts, different nuts and seeds on top. Um, you know, bump up that calorie count. If you, if you are lazy and you don't wanna eat kind of fresh foods like that, then okay, go and find some kind of vegan alternative food at the supermarket, some vegan burgers or some vegan sausages or something like that if you're a bit lazy. But you've got to make sure that you don't just leave on the plate the same foods you had before, but without the animal products, because that, that will not be enough to keep you healthy. So it's just the first couple of weeks, you'll get used to this. You'll be, you'll be like, okay, then, so I'm going to eat this. I'm going to put this in and put this in. You'll be thinking about it. But after a couple of weeks, you won't be thinking about it anymore. You'll be thinking, oh, do you know what? Yeah, I've, I've, I've sorted now. It's all good. So using challenge22.com is a great way to make sure you get that right. On top of that, you could use a free app like Chronometer to track your nutrition. That's Chronometer. Really good way of making sure you're getting the right calories and get the right nutrition. And then once you've got into a flow, a new habit, you got a new habit. That's it. It's like riding a bike. You just do it, you know? Luke says, I've got a great question. Whoever the creator is, let's say God, and he made it so animals eat meat and a tiger would eat me in a blink. Why should it be different for humans? Well, I can tell you two answers to that. Uh, I'll give you one answer and I'll give you another answer. So one answer is, if you believe that God created you, well, then you also have to believe that God created you with the ability to make moral decisions, right? And they didn't give the other animals that that uh, blessing, right? But it gave you that blessing. So you now have the free will under this God to go and do what you think is right or wrong. If you get to the gates of heaven, right, eventually when you die, and they say, hey, um, you learned information about animals and you chose to continue being violent to them. Do you think that's going to give you plus points or negative points? Do you think that's going to go in your favor or against you? So, you know, at the end of the day, you were given a brain and you were given moral agency for a reason. You were given the ability to, to, to think about these things and think about, whereas a lion isn't, a tiger wasn't given that ability, but you were. So I would say use it, use it and make the, make the most of it. Do, right, do the right thing instead of uh, just saying, well, other animals do it. You know what I mean? Now, the second answer I would give you is that uh, I don't know if you're speaking uh, as your name's Luke. I would guess you're coming from a Christian background. Uh, so, so a lot of Christians will say I, I was made in the image of God and that's why I'm important and animals are not important, right? But if you're made in the image of God, okay, then that means that you have godlike features or, or or i suppose that you should have more godlike a more a more godlike approach to life right because you're made in the image of god does god a god is above you though right so if god is above you as in is superior to you in all ways but god doesn't put you in a slaughterhouse god doesn't stab you or shoot you in the head and eat you god actually is your caretaker he's your steward you know he looks after you he has dominion over you, but he chooses to look after you, chooses to, to bless you, and you're his like, favorite creation, right? Then, okay, if you're made in that image, then the way you treat animals should reflect the way God treats you. So don't punish animals for being animals. Don't be violent to them. You have dominion over them, and you're in your eyes, you're superior to them, and that gives you the responsibility to look after them, to be their caretaker, not to be the devil, not to be, because to, to, to them currently, if you're not a vegan, you are Satan to the animals. They fear you. They, they tremble in fear. You're the man holding the knife. Not you personally, but you pay the man holding the knife. That man, that animal is terrified of that man because you paid that man to do it. So you, you are the devil. You are Satan to animals. I don't believe that's acting in God's image whatsoever. That's acting in the image of Satan, surely. So, you know, whichever way you spin it, mate, however you look at it, 
from like a more Christian, you know, concept or more biblical mindset, um, there's two reasons that it is 100% compatible to be a vegan. You can be a vegan Christian. There are many, many vegan Christians out there. And uh, this is why they're Christian and vegan for the reasons I've just gone through. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, someone's saying here, God gave animals to serve humans, which means food. Yeah, but God also created you to serve God. But you're not God's food. You understand? You are a servant of God, aren't you? Yes. And you are in his image. Yes. But he doesn't treat you like that. So why are you treating animals like that? You're not acting in his image. You're actually doing the opposite of that. So anyway, we'll, we'll move on from the from the uh, religious topic because, you know, we could do this all day, but um, I, I feel like we've kind of said enough about it for now. So what we're going to do now, we're going to dive into one of the videos that I was talking about earlier. So this is a video where a carnivore dieter, like a, an anti-vegan, a guy who eats only meat, he came to a protest we were doing and uh, he had meat in his hand and he was shoving it in the faces, shoving it in people's faces and trying to basically ca cause a problem. So we're going to do, we're going to have a little look at this and we'll talk you through it and we'll answer some questions about it as well. Let you guys ask some questions about it as well as we go. And uh, let's dive in and see. Get that away from me. Yeah, Get that away from me. No, Keep your body away from me. Keep your body away from me. This happened just the other day of the week while we were out speaking about this documentary. Joey Carbstrong recently released the powerful documentary Pignorant, exposing the pork industry and the RSPCA's involvement with it. We hit the streets of Horsham, the home of the RSPCA, to find out what the public thinks of the animal abuse the RSPCA supports. An anti-vegan troll turned up with a megaphone and started eating raw meat, as well as harassing the protesters. In today's video, I'm going to show you my heated interaction with this troll, as well as an interesting situation with a 16-year-old kid who stood up to the troll and then joined me for an interview after. Film this, film these two. At least I don't trust the American Dietetic Association for my health advice. Don't you trust your grandma who told you to eat your pork chops at the table? That's right, don't I don't trust my it. grandma, thank you very much. Oh, my Always Lord. trust my grandma. I wouldn't eat anything that my grandma wouldn't recognize as food, sir. So you hear this guy. So this is a guy who's walking around with steak in his hand saying, I trust my grandma over any doctors over any scientists who've been studying food studying nutrition i trust my grandma over them i wouldn't eat anything that my grandma didn't didn't approve so the guy as you can see from the off the guy's you know is a couple of pennies short of a, of a pound you know what i mean so where do you get your your uh, nutrition advice from i get it from nature <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you hear? So where did you get your nutrition, nutrition advice from? Oh, I get it from nature. Um, you know, when someone's saying they get nu the nutrition advice from nature, again, you're not dealing with a serious person. You're dealing with someone who's very silly, right? Let's just be completely clear about that. The reason that's silly is because, so, so nature, nature is not how we solve problems. Nature is not how we have got to the place where we're at now. Actually, the, the reason that you guys are even alive right now and the reason that you guys are on YouTube watching me with electricity and indoor plumbing and all these things is because actually, because the people before us, they were able to fight against nature to create a better world for people today. They created medicine. They created ways that we can live without dying just from it being a particularly cold day or a particularly hot day. So the idea of, well, you know, nature tells me I should eat this. It's, it's seemingly, people seem to think this is a very good reason to eat something or not eat something, but we've proven time and time again that it, it absolutely isn't. Please don't deal with him if he oversteps, mate. Right? I get it from my grandmother. So he gets his nutritional information from nature and his grandmother, which is hilarious. Uh, a difficult question to ask, but how did humans ever think of cutting up animals that eating them or cooking them? How did we evolve to that? Well, we came out of the trees and we started to, uh, our ancestors, um, or like the, at least the in-between one, the in-between animals between our humans and um, our, our predecessors, they, they started to go on the ground, started to walk upright um, and moved into a different way of living, basically. Um, it's, it was just, it's just how evolution worked. 
uh, it's it's probably it was probably most likely driven by a lack of food uh, in the in it's some part of the the you know our history most likely. There's loads of theories as to why it happened, but it's it's an interesting topic. But regardless, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything about what we do today. You know what I mean, Luke? It doesn't mean that, oh, if our ancestors did this, that it means that we should do it. I mean, we, our ancestors didn't use Wi-Fi or, or paracetamol or ibuprofen or antibiotics, you know? So we do a lot of things that they didn't do. And uh, they did a lot of things that uh, we would never do now. So either way, however it happened, we don't need to do it now. You know what I'm saying? I'm a crack. It's his neck. So now this lady, yeah, she confronts him, starts telling him names and telling him to go away. I don't want to, madam. I don't want to go. So at this point, I I step in because uh, I stepped in because the he's being filmed, right? This guy over to the left here, you can see with the face blood. This guy's filming him, and they're doing this. All of, all of this is just for them to try and get more views. Uh, they're just trying to go viral. They're just trying to get people to watch their videos. And when this woman was going to him saying, go away, go away, all that gives this guy is way more views. It gets him more clout. It gets him more viral potential. So I stepped in to try and get her out of the way. Oh, hey. I came hey. here today because I wanted to be here today. Hey, it's me. I'm a vegan. Please step back. Please step back from my personal space. I'm with you. I'm with you. I agree with you. I know your diet gives you unstable emotions. Excuse me. Miss, miss. Irrational anger. Come on. Listen, like he wants this, all right? You know exactly what's going on? So then, yeah. So I got her away. Then we went to talk to this guy here. This guy was still there. By the way, he's still there with the meat. He's there trying to trying to shout and trying to, you know, speak against the vegans. This guy was watching it, so I went and asked him if you, you know what's going on. So listen to what he has to say. I tell you, we're out here because the RSPCA, they approve gas chambers for pigs. They got they approve gassing pigs to death. Right? Yeah, we were there yesterday. They're over there, by the way. They're at council offices here. That's where the head office is. We went over there yesterday. We protested them and said, hey, you know. Get out here and like tell us why you'll keep doing this. You won't answer our emails. You won't answer our investigations. Why are you approving gas chambers? Like the RSPCA, you know? Seriously. Yeah. Right. So so they wouldn't do it. So today we came out to do some outreach and talk to people. And this guy's upset about that because he likes. Uh, you know, he's uh he wants this to continue. You know, like anti-vegan, I suppose is what we call him. But today we're not even out to necessarily talk about veganism. We're here to talk about the RSPCA. So. Yeah, I think most people are against gas chambers, right? Would you fall in that category? Yeah. <laughs> yeah see, so now you've got this, this anti-vegan is shouting away. He's against us. The regular member of the public, I asked him, are you against gas chambers? Yes, I'm against gas chambers. He looks confused by the other guy as well. Most people are confused by these people because most people understand why vegans speak up for what we speak up for. Most people empathize with vegans in that way. I mean, they might not agree with us. They might not like being pressured. They might not like the idea that, oh, vegans judge me. But... They understand that it's coming from a place of, well, they, 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 they're they standing up for animals and most people do stand up for animals. And especially when faced with a guy who's out there with slabs of meat or whatnot saying, oh, you know, screw these vegans. Yeah, there'll be people who agree with him and they'll be like, yeah, so you know, screw the vegans. But ultimately, most normal people, most average people were looking at that guy like, why are you doing that these people are just out here to talk about you know gas chambers and trying to get people to speak up against gassing pigs to death i mean why would you stand against that that's it and this is the documentary he made it's called pignorant um, this is where he exposes the rspca exposes all of it yeah yeah that's sick right so who's this dude <laughs> this guy yeah. he's he's against us he's an anti-vegan um, he, he doesn't like vegans and um, thinks right. some kind of uh, religion or a cult or right i see um, yeah, evil geez. or something you know but um wow. yeah wow. this is why he's motivated to come out here and do this yeah he's got his bag it's quite worrying is he gonna pull a lot of um, meat and milk and oh, he's done it about three or four times over the last Jeez, week yeah dude wow mm. wow so this is the interesting thing you're not a vegan right uh, no i'm not no 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 but you no, no. you're against that right Good man, he's a good man. I'm not, I'm not against vegans. I mean, against him. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Where's his mouth? Well, you tell us then. What are, you, are, you, are you against this guy here on the left? This is the guy who's with that guy. Honestly, man, this person was, I don't know how to put it kindly, but let's just say not the sharpest tool in the box. Are you against him or not? Hey, I'm just partial, mate. I'm in the middle, mate. I'm definitely against animal cruelty, though. Against you know? animal cruelty, absolutely, yeah. Good. Dude. That's yeah, good then. Yeah, absolutely, that's good. mate. I think, See, you know, he stays impartial to the situation, but I'm definitely against animal cruelty. And when 
people, are, when we vegans actually speak to people, we actually have a chance to actually talk to somebody in, 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 a, in a situation like this. Most people, they might say, oh, I don't really like vegans. I don't get, oh, vegans are this, vegans are that. But ultimately, they agree and they say, yeah, I'm against animal cruelty. And that's where we can build from because that's the whole point of why us vegans are out here talking is because we're trying to help people connect with the fact that they're paying for animal cruelty. I think most, most average people, they may not agree with vegans, but they agree with the idea of being good to animals, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, agree, I don't know what he believes about animal cruelty, but he's against people who are trying to encourage people to be good to animals. So we'd assume that he's probably on the side of animal cruelty, I'd say, at this point. Because, yeah, you know, a real shame no, these no people exist. the aggression, man, you know? It's like, dude, seriously. Yeah. Everyone's here to make a point, right? That's okay, accept it. It's just crazy. Sure, yeah, exactly. I would hope that you'd uh, check this documentary out. Yeah, um, I'm actually, I'm actually, it's actually quite worrying, man. So I'll definitely check it out, dude. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate you check that yeah, out. It's on dude, Amazon absolutely. Prime. Yeah, it's free to that. watch if you're, um, okay. if you're on Amazon Prime already, or you can rent it for like four quid or something yeah, like sure. that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that. yeah, you'll learn more about the pork industry specifically, um, and also, I mean, the RSPCA. I mean, if they're gassing pigs to death, or that's yeah, what they that's approve, how can they crazy. be trusted on anything? Yeah, that's. I'm you know? still finding that hard to believe. You know, so it's worth watching the movie to understand yeah. what, what that means. Wow. Appreciate. I appreciate that, man. I yeah, appreciate. It. I hope you do, man. We'll and, uh, and I hope we see uh, we see a vegan out of you as well. <laughs> Anyone who, who cares about animals and is against yeah, animal sure. cruelty, yeah. vegan's definitely the way. But yeah, no, for sure, sure man, but for sure, please do start with this documentary. Yeah, and, I'll check um, it out. I'll check it out. Yeah, for sure, man. Great, man. Sure. Thanks a lot. Have appreciate it. You too, man. See you later. So in the end. That was one conversation that this anti-vegan troll coming down there trying to troll vegans with putting meat in them and stuff like that. In the end, it had resulted in a very good conversation with the guy who was very open-minded to learning about the fact that, you know, pigs are gassed to death. That's how they kill pigs. Uh, and most pigs are killed that way, being gassed to death. He didn't know that. He was shocked about that. He wants to watch the documentary. He wants to watch uh, the documentary Pignorant, right, and learn about that. So this troll, this anti-vegan meat troll, ended up creating that scenario. And it continues too. You'll see now there's another scenario. This is now where a 16-year-old kid, a 16-year-old kid stands up to the guy. Not even a vegan, by the way. This guy is not a vegan. He's a regular kid walking by, nothing to do with us. And he stands up and confronts this troll. Is Move if you want. Well, that's rich of you to say, I would think. Why is that rich? Why is that rich? Why I have mean... you just come in and done that? There's just no need to do that. You're the only one being hostile. No one else being hostile. They're just what sharing being hostile the people also, man? By the way, here he is. His, you can see his hand. He's like eating some kind of raw organ, I think, at this point. Like an animal's organ. Like he's trying to rip it off and trying to chew it at the same time. Well, people have a belief. Uh, so you can see sorry? it. Though. If people don't want to eat I've that. I've been hostile, man. I've been irreverent. I've been sarcastic. Hardly been hostile. I don't want to talk about hostility. Go to Mr. Um, Juice Gear Armstrong over there. Juice Strong. <laughs> with okay. his unprovoked well, aggression and anger. That's pretty hostile. What's, what's you know? the point going up to them with beef if they don't want to eat it? What's the point? You don't have to eat it. I'm not forcing anyone to eat anything they don't want to eat. But if if they you, find it disgusting. Would you well, beef you in it? Have been would you beef in it? I don't know. You, <laughs> Are you with? Are you just like passing by, or? Yeah, no, I'm just passing by. Do I come over and have like a normal conversation, yeah. not with? <laughs> I'm not even vegan. I'm just. Right. Like, I think this guy's just an idiot. So he says, "I'm not even vegan. I just think this guy's an idiot." This is where most people are, and and this is good, you know, because people like that guy. Well, he is an idiot. And now watch what he does now. He starts running up behind me with something in his hand, and I don't really know what it is. So uh, this is what leads to this uh, conflict here. I appreciate that, man. That's, I, I could see that you were standing up for, you know, what I believe is right. And yeah. I think it is, you know, imagine if we had some, like, feminists out here and someone came over saying, like, women don't deserve rights, you know, stuff like that. It's a similar thing, right? Exactly. I, you know, I have huge respect for people who can control themselves to do that. I can't, you know, but right. I'm sure right. I, I hope I hope I'll be able to have the discipline to do that one day. Oh, man, that's right. It's, it's but, a big, big of you. I, big I of you to say understand. that. Yeah. What, what's your deal? Uh, yeah, yeah, just just. I wouldn't, just don't, you're not going to get anything sensible out of me, so just talk, I'd recommend just talking to me. I reckon it's just, um, a, I reckon it's just a tension, to be honest. Oh, for sure, man, that's why these guys filming the whole thing, but well, we're out here today, just ignoring the talk, yeah. So we're out here today, you know the RSPCA? Yeah, you know they're over there in the uh, council offices, yeah? Are they? Yeah, 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 that's where they're based, yeah, come on, let's move over. Yeah, yeah. So what's wrong with the, this is for What's wrong with the Get that away from me, all right. So now he's got one hand with something in it, he's got the other hand with meat in it and starts following me. Uh -oh. the data Get that away from me. Yeah. No, Keep your body away from me. From Keep your you. body away no, from you me. Out of my personal space. 
And you can see, uh, I don't want to say, you know, let's say I don't want to say too much about that situation because I don't want to be acting like, oh, I'm a big man or whatever. But all I did there was I just got my arm like this and I just pushed him like this. You know, it was quite light. And I swear to you, the guy almost fell over. He flew back. He was, he, he must, I don't know, he must weigh probably under half of what I weigh. A dumbass. And um, there's a, there were police officers, by the way, on both sides here. And the reason, by the way, just so you all know, if anyone ever does this to you, all you've got to do is uh, when someone's in your space like that, if there are police around, the police will respect your right to push them away. Okay. So if you say, please don't come near me, you're coming too close to me, I don't feel comfortable like I did, you're in my personal space, don't come closer. If you give them multiple warnings, or even one, but I gave him multiple, and they keep coming, at that point, you are within your rights to use reasonable force, in most countries, reasonable force, to remove them from your from your situation. Now, obviously, it could be a push. Um, of course, we're not talking beat the crap out of somebody, but a push is fine. Um, and then, obviously, if they retaliate with something more violent, then, of course, you'd have to do something else. But just to let you guys know, because I think people get confused with this, uh, if again, if you've given somebody multiple verbal warnings, you are in your rights to physically make make a connection with them. Obviously, in some countries, you might not want to do that for you guys. If you're in the USA, for example, people walking around with guns and stuff, you probably wouldn't want to do it there. In the UK, things are a little bit different, so uh, you're very unlikely to find somebody with a, with a weapon in the UK. This guy obviously didn't have a weapon. He had one hand on his crap in his hand. He had one on his, on a piece of meat. So it was easy just to, to know that it just, just push him back. But yeah, now I speak to the, uh, now I speak to the police officer just after that. Yeah. No, Keep your body away from me. From Keep your you. body away no, from you me. Out of my personal space. Me. You've been warned. You come any closer to me, officer. I'm warning him. If he comes close to me, he'll get hit. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> It's all right, man. I'm just, you know, you got to make sure you don't let them take the piss, you know. So the RSPCA, the, the council officers are over there and that's where they're based. So that that's like all of the most of the conflict. The guy didn't, after that moment where I told him you're going to get hit here, he didn't come get any closer for obvious reasons. Um, but I genuinely meant it. I mean, it, it, give, it had a warning from me. Uh, if he came any closer to me, look, I'm a vegan, but I'm not a pacifist. If he came any closer to me after that warning, I would have... I would have punched him in the face, honestly, because at this point he's had multiple warnings and I don't want him anywhere near me um, for obvious reasons because he's, well, he stank, by the way, absolutely stank like crap. His personal hygiene was terrible. He had a piece of flesh in his hand, a piece of cow flesh in his hand, and he was trying to get that near, near my skin, near my face. Um, and he and he's just, you know, disrupting my, my, my what I'm trying to do. You know, for, so for all of those reasons... He'd been warned multiple times. The police have been there. They'd seen me warn him. If he did it again, I would have punched him in the face. So yeah, he didn't come do it again. Obviously, he uh, backed down. I guess he doesn't truly believe in what he believes in as much as he claims to believe in it because uh, he very quickly stopped bothering me once that threat was made. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the RSPCA, first off? I don't know much about them. I know they're to do with animal welfare. I, yeah. I don't know the, the ins and outs. Of Would you say you're like... So I just want to quickly respond to this Jake who's saying, all six pounds of force in that punch. <laughs> Jake, I'm six foot two and about just under 91 kilos. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I'd be able to slap the troll out of you, to be honest with you, mate. Thinking of them positively, at least, would you say they're like yeah, most likely That's to be what we're in good schools. people? That's me what too, man. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. I grew up watching them on TV, these heroes rescuing exactly, animals, yeah, yeah. right? Now... This sign, you might have already seen it, this is true, so th the RSPCA approves, gives their stamp of approval to putting pigs in gas chambers and gas gassing pigs. them to death, torturing them to death. They scream their lungs out and it hurts them. That's how they kill pigs in this country and the RSPCA gives their stamp of approval on it. Does that shock you? It does. The RSPCA. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal, right? So yesterday we protested them, we told them, hey, this is not on, this is wrong. They responded to us last night and said, you know, we're trying to find something else, but yeah, basically that's all they said. They still approve this. We, we find that to be just disgusting as a, a charity against animal cruelty. Yeah. Yeah. Surprising, right? Shocking. Um, so bear in mind that this is apparently the best it gets. This is the RSPCA approved. Yeah. What do you think that says about the rest of the meat industry? True, yeah. 
what do you what do you think? Like, can can any of it be trusted? I think that uh, I think logically, yeah, I think you're right. That it must be it must be pretty bad. It must get worse, even worse than that. Right. As you go down, yeah. Yeah. Well, these right. these guys go and check these industries. They go and check. And they say this is fine. So yeah, you're you're right, mate. You're right. The ones that aren't being checked are probably even worse than this. Um, so knowing that, knowing that all these RSPCA assured products are most likely nonsense, based on just this one example alone. Well, this is why earlier on you were defending the vegans and you said that you know potentially one day for you. Um, what stops you from making that change and not putting your trust in these liars? Yes. So you know at this point the guy stood up for vegans. He's not a vegan himself, but he stood up for, for vegans because he stood up for what he believes is right. And what he believes is right is these people are out here and they are defending animals and they're trying to educate, they're trying to convince people to be better for animals. And he doesn't think that it's right to go over and shove meat in their faces and shout at them and try to intimidate them, right? So he's already stood up for what is right. And this is somebody, again, who's not a vegan, but he stands up for what is right. And that was brave, by the way. This kid's 16. A 16-year-old standing up to a, this, this other guy who was a full-grown man who was a megaphone and was causing problems. And this 16-year-old, not even his fight, but he still stands up for what is right. So this kid is, is already far, far ahead. Let me tell you something. A lot of the trolls we get here in the chat, a lot of the people we get saying silly things about vegans and, you know, trying to wind vegans up and stuff like that. This guy is leagues ahead of, of, of those types of people. He's probably the same age. There's probably people who troll vegans in live chats and stuff like that. They're probably 16-year-olds themselves, or at least they have the, the mental age of a 16-year-old. This kid is actually 16, and as you can see, he is leagues ahead of anybody like that. He stands up for what is right, even if it's not even his fight. He's already there. Now, I'm asking him, you stand up for what is right. You're against animal cruelty. You're against animal violence. What's stopping you from going the full way and standing up for what is right for these animals and actually being one of the people who stands up for them and refuses to fund the violence. That's true. I don't know, it's just, it's kind of hard, it's hard to break a habit, you know, you're, you're born into and yeah, you man. Know, since birth. But I think, yeah, no, there are some like magnanimous people that can just, you know, switch on the things. And I'll try, I'll try one day, I'm sure. How old are you, by the way? Oh, I'm 16. 16? You're switched on for 16, man. Uh, I do a lot of, you know, talking to people in the street. I meet a lot of 16 year olds and, you know, I've met a lot that are a bit silly because, you know, I'm sure you've got mates, you know, a bit yeah. silly. Yeah. But for you, let me tell you something, mate. For you to come up and stand up to that guy like that, I was incredibly brave. Thank you. And everyone here will very much appreciate that. I'm going to tell this story. And um, we need people like you on the streets, man. Sorry, we need yeah. people like you on the streets fighting for animals, brave people like you. So I really hope that's something you're, you're going to you're gonna do. I hope you'd become a vegan. I hope you'd. You've got the courage to stand up to someone with a megaphone sh shouting at people. Yeah. I'm sure you've got the courage to stand up for animals too, you know? Yeah, I reckon you're right. I know I'm right. Yeah. I can see it in you, I can see it in you, man. I can yeah. see it in you. You got, some, you got something, man. This is the documentary that where the RSPCA was exposed. It's called Pignorant. Um, you're welcome to take a photo of any of this if you want, by the way. It's also here on the bottom. If you want to grab a photo of I, it I so you can... Honestly, I remember. You sure, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Thank you Good much. to meet you, mate. Cheers. All right. Yeah. See you later. Thanks very much. So that was pretty much the end of this video. The, the rest of it is um, about something else that you, you probably, um, it's not really relevant to what we were looking at. But yeah, how cool is that? So this troll comes along, meat in his hand, trying to wind the vegans up, trying to, trying to intimidate the vegans. He gets pushed away by me and threatened. He stops doing it. And then two other passers-by have seen the whole situation. One of them says, yeah, no, I'm against animal abuse. I don't think this is right. The other one stands up to the guy and then comes and talks to the vegan. You know, how good is that? This is, this is reflective of most people are good people inside and good people do bad things. And sometimes they do bad things without knowing. Sometimes they do bad things once they know the truth because they're struggling to accept the truth. You know what I mean? This kid is now in the second boat. So he's now accepted that he knows the truth and he's faced up to it. But I don't know if he's vegan or not at this point. But every day that he's not vegan, all he's doing is lying to himself. All he's doing is, is uh, you know, he's not holding himself accountable. He's staying in the old habit and the habit that most people are in. Uh, because, hey, look, it's difficult to stand up for what is right. But that doesn't mean you don't stand up for what is right. You know what I mean? Anything worth doing is usually not easy. You need to remember that. If it's easy, it probably wasn't worth much. Do you agree? At least with that, vegan or not, in the chat, agree or disagree with me. If it's easy, 
it probably wasn't even worth doing. But if it's hard, usually difficult things have more worth to them. Usually difficult things are more valuable to you as a person or, or whatever it is, right? I think we all need to, I think we all need to come and agree on that. And going vegan, back to going vegan again, it can be tricky, it can be inconvenient. It's difficult to stand up to the rest of the world who's not vegan, but it's a difficult thing that's worth doing because you're standing up for what is right. You're standing up for what you believe in. You're, you're against animal violence, you're against animal abuse, so you stand up against it, right? That's what it's all about. That's what. That's what, That's why vegans are vegan, even though everybody seems to hate us, or not everybody, but many, many people seem to, to hate vegans because they don't like feeling guilty. But vegans stay vegan anyway, because we're less interested in people's opinions of us. We're more interested in, in doing good things for animals. And we will not pay people to be violent to animals in the animal agriculture for meat, dairy, eggs, or any other animal products. That's more important. And it, it is as simple as that. I'll, uh, let's go back to the chat for a little bit, guys. And coming back to the chat, so ask some questions. And then we'll, we'll take a look at another video where things got a bit spicy. I got into a bit of an argument with a guy and... Uh, uh, people seem to find this one pretty interesting, so we'll get into that as well. Uh, Paulina says, it's easy. Be vegan. Hey, look, once you connect to the animals and you start to realize that, hey, no amount of pleasure is worth animal violence, then it is easy. You know what? I came up with an interesting comparison earlier on. So I'm not going to ask you guys to out yourselves, but I'm going to tell you something. So, so I, I imagine some of you in the chat, I imagine you have cheated on somebody or you've been cheated on right? In a relationship. Why do you think people cheat? Well, they cheat because they're thinking about the short-term pleasure, right? It'll be fun and exciting. But afterwards, what happens? They feel terrible. They feel guilty, right? Because it's it's a horrible thing. You've betrayed someone's trust and, and you did it just for some something something fun, right? But it's a horrible thing to do, right? So, but But if people were thinking about how they would feel after they wouldn't cheat, right? A husband wouldn't cheat on his wife if he was thinking about the guilt and the, the, how, how he's betrayed his wife. The only reason that a husband cheats is because he's thinking about the pleasure and not the guilt. This is almost the same as when you go vegan because when you're asking me, but this, but this, but this, and you're making lots of excuses, you're thinking about the pleasure. You're not thinking about the harm that's done you're not thinking about the fact that now you know the truth, you will feel guilty because you don't hate animals. You actually love animals, just like the husband loves his wife. You don't want to hurt animals, just like a cheater doesn't want to hurt their partner. But sometimes people let pleasure get in the way and they don't pay attention to what's more important. This is the same. Stop letting pleasure get in the way of what's important. Burgers taste good. Okay. Cheese tastes good. Okay. Okay. But that's not what's important. What's important is that you're against violence to animals. I'm against violence to animals. So let's not pay for that violence to animals, even if it gives you pleasure, even if you get cheese, even if you get burgers. We look for alternatives. Spice things up with your wife <laughs> instead of, you know, look for alternatives. Look for vegan alternatives that don't cause harm. Look for relationship alternatives that don't cause harm. You see what I mean? I know it's a weird comparison, but it's the only thing I could think of where that people can connect with because, you know, that's the only situation where people put pleasure before someone else's pain. And that's what people do for animals. They put their own pleasure before the animal's pain. Okay, so that's why I made the comparison, but I hope it made sense to you. Put, put the pain before the pleasure. Think about somebody else. Stop thinking about yourself all the time. Stop thinking just about how it'll make you feel. Oh, it'll make me, it'll make me feel good though. I like it. Start thinking about the animal and also consider the fact that it feels good in the moment to eat a burger, but you feel bad when you see where that burger came from. You feel guilty. So just skip the guilt and skip the abuse for those animals and eat a vegan burger instead. It truly is that simple. That's what be that's what that's being a vegan. That's it's that simple. You know what I'm saying? Um, thanks there. So I hope, yeah, I see you guys are vegan power labs. Has anyone told you you look like a UFC fighter? No. Which one? <laughs> Never been told that. I might look like one, but but trust me, um, I would be useless in a fight. Like, don't get me wrong. I could defend myself and I could I could maybe punch someone. But if I was against a trained fighter, I, I'd get my ass kicked. I'm the first to admit that. I need to learn to fight. I need to train. Um, actually, I think most people don't realize that 
they don't know how to fight. No one knows how to fight unless you've trained. Um, you get your ass kicked, most likely. So yeah, but um, but if I look the part, that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. All right, let's uh, let's jump back into the the next reaction video we're going to take a look at. Then um, the next video I'm going to take a look at. I'm going to react to. So there was another video that I where I did another uh, a debate where basically this guy, where is it? He was, it got into a bit of a shouty debate. So it's here and I'll give you some context to this one. So, so this guy here. So as you'll see in a minute at the beginning of the video, uh, we were out on the streets. We were doing some, some, uh, some activism. We were showing people some videos um, and uh, well, you'll see now, you'll see the beginning of the video. It explains it. Oh, Mark, thank you so much for the super chat, mate. Eternal gratitude to David and Annie for helping to manifest a civilized world. For now, man's middle name is Torture. Man, Torture Man, Little Empathy. Mark, I mean, yeah, mate, we're all doing our best out here. And uh, I appreciate your support. And, and I, I, for sure, I think you're right. I think there are good people in the world. But of course, you know, the vast majority of people are not... Um, not not the the good people doing bad things, especially bad things to animals, and that's what we're trying to change. We're trying to show that the good people that you're doing bad things to animals, please let's try and be better. Uh, and that's why we're vegan. You know, that's what we're. That's why I even talk about it. You know, uh, because guys, let me tell you something. <laughs> like you you see, Mark sends through some money, and that's nice. Um, and you'll see other people do it too, which thank you, everybody. Please do continue doing that super chats and everything, donations. But it's it's not... <laughs> Let me tell you, I don't do this for that, as in to earn money. It's not the reason I do this. Um, how do I prove that to you? I mean, some people might be... I've, I've seen some people questioning that, actually, recently, and, and I got thinking about it and how funny it is to suggest that. I I do this work... This is the work that is least likely to make me rich. You understand that? I'm going out and telling people that they shouldn't do things they love. I'm going out telling people messages that they don't want to hear. They, they don't want to hear it. And people seem to think that there is, uh, oh, he does it, you know, this is for money or whatever. And this is the, it's for a career or whatever. And, and let me tell you just, that is, it's so silly. I do this because I'm trying to make a positive change in the world for animals and I'm in a position where I'm fortunate enough to uh, to be able to do it. Um, and, um, you know, lot, not a lot of people are. That's why we do it, yeah. So, Mark, I really appreciate you, mate. Considering what I've just said there, and, you know, it is very difficult to do what we do, you know, and, and to, to keep it all going and keep it all going strong. So people like Mark, people who do send money are massively appreciated because trust me, there is not a lot of money in telling people things they don't want to hear. <laughs> truly, truly not. Um, it's difficult, you know? <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Mark. And please keep it up, guys. Appreciate it. All right, let's jump into this then. And let's have a little watch of this uh, explosive debate, which is titled, Vegan Deb Debate Explodes When Meat Eater Says This. You just like of the species. we have, yes, you and I. We, we spent five minutes in a jungle, you'd be dead within the day. You are resting you on the world. Because you know, that's like, like, don't touch it. Keep going, guys. We got. We're gonna get cool. We hit the streets of London to show the public a few minutes of Pignorant, a new documentary by Joey Carbstrong that exposes the abuse and corruption of the UK pork industry. This guy is currently watching UK footage of pigs being tortured to death in gas chambers, an extremely painful killing method used by the pork industry in slaughterhouses all over the world. Right, so can you tell us a bit about what you saw? Um, I saw a shock value movie pertaining to pigs pertaining to pigs yeah what exactly was in it what did you see i saw pigs pigs yeah what was happening to them they were on the farm mm -hmm. living a farm life mm -hmm. to be clear guys i had already established that this guy was was arrogant from the first words that came out of his mouth so he said, oh, it's a shock value movie. So I knew he had some kind of attitude and some some kind of attitude problem. I'm trying to be nice, but you'll see the moment. There's a moment in this video where I just decide niceness is not an option. And then 
uh, things change. <laughs> Getting abused. Then abuse, yeah. Okay. What makes you say shock value music? Well, it's a shocking video. Fair enough. Pigs getting abused can be quite shocking. That's true. Like yeah. anything getting abused can be quite shocking, actually. Yeah, sure. Know. How would you feel if I told you that everything you saw is approved by the RSPCA? All of that RSPCA stamp of approval. Would you agree with that? Well, I don't think slapping pigs with a stick is approved by anyone. The farms themselves are RSPCA approved, and the gas chamber, for example. Yeah, but they're RSPCA. not approving the farms knowing that they're slapping pigs with sticks. Not that part, Because no. that's animal abuse, and it's not sure. approved anywhere. Not so that. obviously you cut footage gas... of something happening, you know. Yeah, that's And then you yeah, provide yeah. A, a shock value oh, so you, okay, so you, so Okay, so you're of the opinion that this is none of this is uh, real, it's all kind of no, selective it's quite, or... It's like quite normal. real. It's yeah, very yeah. real, but... Right, um, yeah. It's obviously selective information, isn't it? Right, so the gas chambers part, you think that's also selective? You think that's Well, selective normal? in the sense that you come here and you show us this video, which mm. it definitely happens. Sure. Just as, you know, some, some child is getting murdered at this moment. It doesn't make, you know. Okay. So what he's trying to do here, he's trying to dismiss the video he's just watched by saying, well, you know, these are just the odd bad things that happen in these industries. It's just the odd thing. Well, the reality is, and Alex, I explained this briefly now. The gas chamber, you watch the footage there of gas chambers. That is not the odd bad thing. That is a system that is, is built around gas chambers. Okay, so there's the pig industry, the pork industry, that, that's what they do. They gas pigs to death. That is how they do it. Thousands and thousands of them every single day. The other clip that he watched was a man who was beating a pig to death. And he's saying that, oh, that's a one-off. These are secret cameras that are planted in farms. How do you think they catch these shots, guys? Do you think they sh they catch these things by what? You know, if this only happens every now and then, you'd have to have cameras there for months and months and months and months, even years to be able to catch it. Do you know how long the camera was there for? I believe it was three days. They put a camera in a farm for three days and they caught a farmer beating a pig to death with a with an iron rod. Three days is all it took. So times that by all the farms in the world, and how many farms do you think they're doing those kinds of things to pigs and other animals in? Spoiler alert, it's a lot. It's a lot, okay? But anyway, regardless of that, despite that, the gas chambers that he watched, that's not just like, a, oh, it's a one-off. No, that is actually part of the system that is approved by the animal charities for some bloody reason, by the RSPCA. They approve it as a humane way of slaughter. And as you saw, those animals are screaming and, and screeching out. They're in pain. There's acid in their eyes. There's acid in their lungs because that's what the, acid, that's what the uh, gas does to them. And this guy is trying to claim that it's not, like, not real, basically. He's trying to claim that it's selected information. So what, about, what about if I told you the gas chambers, that's how most pigs are killed in the UK? Did you know that? Most pigs? Most pigs, yes. What percentage of pigs? Over 90%. 90% of Over pigs are killed? Over 90%, percent, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you... Did you know that? No, I'm not well versed in the in the pig community yeah. or the pig yeah. slaughtering community. Sure. No. Sure, so, so for sure, you know, at the end of the day, we could put secret cameras in pigs all over the in um, farms all over the country. We may or may not see workers beating the crap out of pigs with rods. Mm. Either way, but you, you're correct. The RSPCA is not necessarily approving that. No, but gas chambers, they do approve. Does that surprise you at all? No. But the RSPCA approves gas chambers to kill animals. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals well. approves gas chambers. I'm not well versed on gas chambers and if it hurts the pigs a lot or if it doesn't. But you, they were screaming, right? You saw that? Yeah, they're screaming, yeah. Why do, you, why do animals death scream? Death is never a nice thing, but... Um, why do animals scream? Well, because they're not enjoying their death, are they? I mean... Because they feel pain. Animals have to die, right? Do they? Of course they have to die. Animals why? have to die. Why is that? Well, just as if you and I, if we were in the wilderness, mm. we would die if we came about, you know, Oh, to right. a lion or to a tiger. Do sure, they have to be dying? Do they have to be killed in gas chambers? Well, there's methods of killing, and if you're asking me if uh, gassing pigs to death is the most correct way, probably not. Hmm. Probably not. So what he tried to do here to explain, he tried to say, well, everyone has to die, and tried to make it in, a, in like a situation, kind of like a, oh, you know, we all have to die one day, and tried to make it something that's not killing if that makes sense oh, oh we all we all die one day but but yeah but that doesn't mean that it's okay to go and murder people 
just because they're going to die one day, you don't get to murder them. And this is quite an interesting thing that a lot of meat eaters and non-vegans that they do when they talk to a vegan, they say, well, you know, we all die one day. It's it, as a justification to gas pigs to death or to stab animals in the neck. Very strange because you would never say that for humans. You'd never say, oh, I found out there's a serial killer over in another country. Well, I mean, we've all got to die one day, right? Why are the police bothering trying to get him? No, we wouldn't. We People are always like, go and catch that serial killer. This is wrong. But the second they talk to a vegan, all of a sudden it's, uh, well, you know, well, you know, we all, <laughs> we'll all meet our demise uh, one day or another, won't we? Very strange. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, but you don't think it's the worst thing in the world, no. Have you ever... I think a human getting gassed to death is considerably worse than a pig getting gassed to death. Well, we could just say, let's not do it to either, couldn't we? Of course. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm very much of the opinion of using a stun gun on a pig. And So, just to be clear again, he's comparing now to saying, well, I think it's worse for a human. You can, th you can believe that humans are more important than pigs and still not want people to be violent to pigs. You don't have to choose one or the other, but this is another common thing that meat eaters and non-vegans do. People do when they argue with vegans. They try to talk about human issues, right? And the reason that people do this, they try to talk about human issues, is because they feel guilty and they're looking for a way out. But let me tell you, nine people out of ten, they don't do anything for humans either. I'm yet to meet, well, I've very rarely met anyone who said to me, I think humans are more important. And then it turns out that they're some kind of human rights worker who spends all of their time and gives all their money to charity and da 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 da. Usually you ask them, what do you do for humans then? Usually they say, actually, I, I, you know, I'm quite busy. I actually have a full-time job. I don't really have time to help humans. You know, so the, it, it's just a distraction. It's just a, to try and make themselves feel better. And I understand it's fine. I understand you're trying to make yourself feel better because now a vegan's asking you difficult questions. But if, if people actually stopped and had a think and be critical thinking, just be reasonable and just talk honestly, you don't need to make all these excuses up when you meet a vegan. It's not necessary. We can just have a normal conversation about normal things and you could answer without being so defensive like this guy. You realize that, right? You don't have to be really defensive. You can agree with the vegan and we can move forward. And what are you afraid of losing? What are you actually scared of? Why are you making these excuses? Why are you coming up with these silly points? What's the need for it, you know? You've got nothing to lose. Just just be honest and have an honest conversation. Putting him to death in a, in a more peaceful way. So shooting them in the head is more peaceful than gassing them to death? In yeah, your, 100%, your, yeah. You think so? Okay. It's a quicker death. If you're, if you're euthanizing them, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense in the, in the sense you're putting them out of their misery. When they're a perfectly healthy animal and they're being killed for a burger, yeah. I'd, be tempted, I'd be tempted to disagree with you strongly on that. Oh, I so basically, what he's tried to say here is, Oh, you know, they have to die, they have to be killed, so I'd rather shoot them in the head rather than gas them. What I'm saying is, sure, if you have to kill them to, if they're sick or they're, they've got cancer or there's something really wrong and they can't survive, or imagine, I don't know, imagine you're walking your dog in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere and your dog suddenly starts having this horrible disease or something like that then yes, you would, and you had to you had to help them by, you have to kill them to help them. You wouldn't want to gas them, you'd shoot them in the head, right? Because that's the quickest way to end their suffering. And, you know, if, if, if you can't get a vet, if you, if you have no choice, he would be right in that situation. But he's trying to make it out like that's the situation that pigs are in. No, it isn't. Farmers breed pigs. They make them have babies. They make them have more pigs. So then they can kill them and sell them to people. And then they keep, creating more and more pigs and then keep killing them and selling. That doesn't have to happen, right? Uh, but this guy's kind of speaking as if it has to happen. And this is the problem here. And this is where we start to disagree a bit more strongly now. And then things do kind of go, because he says something very silly. And uh, you'll see now. Uh, but that's oh. a peaceful way to I think to this kill. is, now we're getting to the interesting point, because this is where I disagree with you. Yeah. You know, if I want to eat a burger, we've won the battle of the species. 
and so I believe that we're entitled to eat a pig. <laughs> you've just won the like battle of the species. We have, yes, you and you I, my friend, five, you and I. If you we spend have. five minutes in a jungle, you'd be dead within the day. You've not won not the battle of any species. Of course we have, because of species. A when pig, I, a pig, winning a battle of species is not just by force, listen, it's listen. by intelligence. Listen, which you may listen, like a bit, because you don't understand. Your, your intelligence level could not save you from a fall from a jungle, I'll tell well, you that. Well, it does. Look around. This is all ours. No, you personally. I don't see a pig running empire. You are resting on the laurels. If you go inside of Empire Casino, there's, there's, there's not the here. pig can't, dealing she, the cards. She can't hear you. The microphone's here. She can't hear you. That's the mic. Don't, don't, I like, don't touch it. I'll I'm it saying on. there's no pig dealers inside of Empire Casino. It's all humans. Because we've won the Battle of the Species. You're resting on the laurels of all of your ancestors. You personally, My ancestors, yeah. you personally would last five minutes in a, in a jungle, whereas a pig would last probably 20 years. Right? Well, they but, that, but that doesn't mean... Well, hold up, hold, up, hold because... up. But that doesn't mean... But that doesn't mean I think you deserve to be killed just because you oh, could survive out in the wild. But a pig is not going to have your sense of morality. And this See, like, the guy is jumping all over the place. This is a funny moment because he said, we've won the battle of the species, which is hilarious. Any Anyone who's saying, I've won the battle, you've, you've not won anything. What do you mean, battle of the species? You've done nothing. All you've done has been born into a very easy world. This guy's been born into a very easy world. All convenient, everything's good for him. We've got all modern medicine, we've got all Wi-Fi and heating and da-da-da. He's won no battle whatsoever. And that doesn't give him, him... Him being born into this doesn't give him the right to abuse others. What this is called, guys, for those that don't know, there's a, I see there's 56% of you here aren't vegan. Let me explain something to you. There's something called might makes right. Okay, this is the idea that if someone's stronger than you or smarter than you, they can do what they want to you. If, if, if any of you have been bullied at school, anyone, let me know in the chat. It's okay. We're not going to make fun of you. Obviously, I'm going to bully you again. Um, I was bullied in school um, and uh, well, at some point, a couple of years. So bullies, why do they bully? Because they believe that might makes right. They believe, well, they're, they're stronger than you. That's why they can bully you. They're bigger than you most of the time, right? And they use their strength and the size to hurt you. And they think they have the right to do that because they're bigger than you. That's why they do it. They say, well, I'm bigger, so I can do it. I can do what I want. You'll see it in, in loads of situations. Um, and we as a, as a communities, we stand up against that. Somebody who has a gun shouldn't be able to go and do what they want to everybody who doesn't have a gun, right? If you lived in a village and one guy got a gun and then was like, you all do what I'm going to say. I'm the mayor. I'm your boss now with a gun, would you accept it? No, people would come together and they would try to find out a way to stop him because we don't believe might make, makes right. We don't believe that that's the right way to be. We've decided that. This guy is saying, well, I won the battle of the species, i.e. I'm the most intelligent, I'm the strongest, so I can do whatever I want to animals. Well, we don't accept that when it comes to humans, so why would you accept that when it comes to animals? They're weak and defenseless. Animals can't defend themselves against you. Just like if somebody walked in with a gun, you couldn't defend yourself against them. That doesn't give the guy with the gun the right to hurt you. It doesn't give this guy the right to hurt animals. You see what I mean? So might makes right. That is not That is not a good argument. That is not a good thing to do. Why am I wearing a veganish t-shirt? I'm not wearing a veganish t-shirt. It says veganism. Veganism. This t-shirt, by the way, is a Metallica-inspired t-shirt. And you get it on my website, davidrams.com, if you want to pick up a t-shirt and, and support the channel. Cheers, guys. It's going to kill no, me anyway. No, neither is a child, right? Yeah. So we don't so kill let's go back. Have your sense of morality. So he says, okay, yeah, because... animals don't have your sense of morality, he says. Because you oh, but... survive out in the wild. But a pig is not going to have your sense of morality, and it's going to kill no, me anyway. No, neither is a child, right? Yeah. But we don't kill children for having a lack of a sense of morality, do we? Well, we don't tend to kill our own species. That's very contradictory. Oh, so he's bouncing around all over the place, you see. So he said, because a pig doesn't have your sense of morality, it's okay to kill them. I said, a child doesn't, doesn't have your sense of morality. And then he just skips to, well, you know, you know, killing children is not okay. And he just kind of moves the conversation over to somewhere else because every time that he gets cornered, he flips onto a different argument. This is what the guy's doing. Uh, thank you so much, Daniel Pratt, for the super chat, mate. Thank you, David and Annie, for all you do. You are appreciated. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate you, mate. You're a legend. Thank you so much. So yeah, this guy's this guy's bouncing all over the place. He well, you can keep watching, watch him bounce all over a little bit more. It's a morality, do we? Well, we don't tend to kill our own species. That's very contradictory oh, to the evolution of species. Thank you. Listen, come on. Just let me finish. No, but I am. The microphone's uh, staying where it is, but just don't grab it. Listen, listen. If it, if you're gonna base who gets to live or who gets to die 
on what you see as important because you're saying your cognition and your intelligence is what's important. That's easy to say when you're the one that has all the cognition and the intelligence. Yes, so again, we won the battle of the species. We are in the position of Okay, so if someone thinks you're not... Okay, so someone looks at you and says, where are you from, by the way? Well, I'm half Portuguese, half English. Half from Portuguese, Portugal, half yeah. English. You sound like someone uh, I know, that's why I, I got the uh, Portuguese side of it, yeah. Um, so if someone says to you, hey, listen, in my value system, Portuguese people are worth less than my people, therefore I get to do what I want with you, you'd say, hell no. No, 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 because in my value system, I don't think that's right. I think we need to come together and come up with a value system that means you don't get to kill me just because you want to, right? You're doing that to a pig. You're saying, hey, because you're not a human, I've made it that humans are most important because I'm a human, so you guys, you die. You see what I mean here? So to explain what, what he's done again, just to put it in more simple terms, it would be like basing who gets to live or die on eyesight. Who has the best eyesight? Whoever has the best eyesight, whichever animal, whichever animal has the best eyesight, then they get to live and all the other animals, they're below them, right? So an eagle, they have the best eyesight, right? Eagles uh, can see for I don't know how long. They, they have crazy eyesight. So they're the best. And then we go down in a scale. So we've chosen eyesight, okay? Well, okay, well, that, that, why, why have you chosen eyesight? That's just what we've decided on, right? So in this case, we've chosen intelligence and, and the ability to have morals. Okay, why have you chosen that? Well, because humans have it. Okay, is there any other reason you've chosen that? No, it's just we have those things, so we get to decide. Every other animal doesn't have those things, we get to do what we want to them. So basically, wait, you're saying, so just genetics? So we're just basically picking genetics and we're saying these genetics are good and these ones are bad, so therefore we kill the ones that are bad. Do you know who else did that? Guys, do you know a, a man from history who said those exact words? These genetics are good, those genetics are bad. So we're going to kill everybody with those genetics. Put it in the chat if you know somebody else who said that. Somebody very famous, who we've all learned about in school. I'm waiting for the first person to get it in the chat. There you go, Rowana got it immediately. Okay, that's the logic this guy is using. He's saying, he's, he's saying, Genetics are what's important, and they were born with bad genetics, therefore we get to kill them. Sounds a lot like the person you're saying in the chat, doesn't it? The person that Rowana said. Is someone else going to get it? I want a couple more people to put it, because otherwise some people might miss it. But anyway, begins with a H, ends in an R. He was a particularly eccentric German who did a lot of work around the 1940s. And that's what he used to say. Genetics are what's important. Genetics, you know, our genetics are good, theirs are bad, therefore, let's, let's kill them. Let's kill all of them. That's what this guy's saying now. That's messed up, right? But you see, that when talking to a vegan, a lot of meat eaters, a lot of non-vegans, they fall into this line of thinking without realizing how messed up it is. Vegan or not, vegan or not, guys, that's a bad argument. Do you agree? Yeah, sorry. No, he's not German. Yeah, okay. We rewind. Paulina's right. Sorry. It happened in Germany, the situation from before, but he's Austrian. Anyway, back to the point. Vegan or not, agree with me, guys, that what he's saying is bad. That's bad reasoning because it's the same reasoning as that famous Austrian man, right? And we all agree that that wasn't good. That's not a good way. Racism's based on the same thing. You have the wrong genetics. Therefore, you're lower than me. Again, what was that used to justify? Begins with an S, ends in a Y. What word is that? Well, we used genetics to decide that some people had to, to be working for free in horrible conditions and abused, and some people were the rulers because of genetics, because of skin color. These are bad arguments, guys. If you're going to use that logic to do those horrible things to animals, you're... Not much different from people that have used that logic to do bad things to humans. We need to move away from that. We need to stop saying these things. Stop using genetics as a reason to be violent to other animals that can't defend themselves. How right. is that fair to a pig? What did they do <clears throat> to deserve that? Because human race and species are two very different things. Because so, you like it that way, yeah. Exactly. Because I like because it's because nature. You're human. Because, because it's you're human. Well, if I could finish my sentence, go on, I would then. very go on. like to yeah, go. Go on, it's all right. go well, on. because species and races are two very different things, and I like it that way because it's only nature. Uh so now he's justifying what he's saying, 
saying species and, and races are two different things, and I like it that way because it's nature. So, do you understand, guys, that not so long ago, like in our recent history, people were saying, some people were saying, that people who came from Africa were not the same species as the people in Europe and the Europeans, i.e. the white people. Did you know that? Some scientists tried to make that claim that they were actually not the same species. So what this person's saying, well, you know, race and species is different. Well, it wasn't different in that time period and it was used to do horrible things. People made this excuse to do horrible things to those people with a different skin color. Again, this guy is doing what those people did. Um, the same way a lion also likes it that way. A lion is not going to spare you in the wilderness, nor is a tiger, oh, nor a pig, yeah, nor yeah, any yeah, yeah. animal for that matter is going to think, well, you know, this guy might want to live, so I'll spare him. That's not how nature works. Tell me why. Why can't, why won't a lion do that? Because it's in his instinct, it's in his nature to hunt, to kill right. anything that moves. Just as it's in your instinct as well. No matter how much you try to contradict it, it is in your instinct. But obviously we're rational, as you say. So the extension of that rationality can lead to things like this. That's it. Which is a, That's I don't it. agree with, but lion, I respect, I if respect. A, if a lion sees a pig on the floor bleeding to death, they get hungry. If you see a pig on the floor bleeding to death, you don't get hungry. It depends. If I'm starving, I certainly do get hungry. If I'm chilling here with Greg's in hand, I'm going to think, well, not so nice. But if I'm in the wilderness and I see a pig bleeding to death, I can bet you anything so, you'd like, I will get hungry. So what you're saying is, in a survival situation, it would make sense to uh, find a bleeding pig hungry, but in a civilized situation like this, it wouldn't make sense. You wouldn't feel hungry, right? No, I wouldn't feel hungry, no. Right. Well, because that's the exact I, point. I'm fed because well, that's I'm the exact fed. point. That's the exact point, isn't it? You have the option right now in this civilized society to not put pigs in gas chambers, but you're saying you're going to choose to do that because you're a human and they don't matter because they're not a human, right? I am, I getting, not... am I getting you right? Almost, almost there. On, but uh, except for the point where I don't believe gassing pigs is the most correct way to okay. immunize them. Why not? They're just pigs, they're not human. Why does it matter? Well, because I think that we can have some sense of morality. It, doesn't need, it doesn't need to be extended to the extent that Why? you're taking it on to. Why bother? They're Why just bother? pigs. Why bother? Well, you know what? You've convinced me. I'm going to start gassing pigs. So you don't me. actually care about I mean, pigs I'm gonna then, go yeah? Out. Well, I'm just trying, I like I'm trying pigs. To I like out. pigs, but I don't care that much about them. Uh, to the point where you seem to care about them that much, you know. That, that's so again, all the guy's trying to do is defend his life, defend eating meat, defend not being a vegan. He doesn't want to seem like a complete emotionless psycho, so he's saying, "Look, you know, I do care about pigs in some way." But I can't agree with you on this, otherwise it means I have to become vegan. That's what's going on here. That's the situation. If he was being honest and being reasonable, he would have agreed. He would agree with me and say, do you know what? You're right. Nature, ancestors, none of this stuff matters because we are humans living in 2024 and what's happened has happened. What all, all, the, all that matters is now. All that matters is what we do from here on out. It doesn't matter what happened before. Right? We're, we're new now. We're new humans. We, we do what we think is right and wrong. And it also doesn't matter if an animal knows what's right or wrong, because neither does a baby. And a baby is so vulnerable and innocent, it doesn't know what's right and wrong. And we defend the baby. An animal is vulnerable and innocent, doesn't know what's right and wrong. We should defend the animal too. We shouldn't be paying people to hurt animals so we can eat their bodies in burgers when we can just eat something vegan instead. That's what he'd say if he wasn't desperately trying to defend not being a vegan. But when people are desperately trying to defend not being a vegan, there's no reason to it. There's no reason to what he's saying. It's just desperation, just trying to desperately just defend himself against and say anything crazy, anything ridiculous, whatever he can do to not agree with the vegan, basically. It's pretty much how it goes. Uh, the video's almost finished. And then, guys, I know a lot of you have been saying, I see a couple people in the chat. I will, we'll come back to the chat soon, okay, guys? As soon as this video's over, I'm going to come to the chat. But for those who've been going through and saying... Uh, I think it was aimed at me. You're saying, oh, that's a terrible argument. Oh, that's a bad argument. Oh, that's really bad. You're sure that's, that makes no sense. Or you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. That's totally fine. You're not going to get kicked out of the chat unless you spam. But you do have to type in your arguments. What point are you trying to make? Just saying I'm offended or I don't agree. Guys, that's nothing. It means nothing. Okay, all it shows me is you don't agree. That's meaningless. You need to actually explain why you have what problem you have you have to explain why you think i'm wrong otherwise like i said it's a meaningless comment um you're, you're not changing anyone's mind uh you're not 
achieving anything, right? But you're here, you're watching for a reason, aren't you? So explain the problem. Uh, not right now, because I'm looking at, not looking at the chat. But after the video's finished, get you know, gather your thoughts, guys. Think, have a think about what you want to say. Maybe type your thing out in the notes or something like that. Copy it, get ready, and paste it as soon as I tell you to go. And then I'll answer your questions, all right? The difference. Uh, okay, okay. Well, well, we've, I think mean, having some know, sense of morality is correct. Listen. You know, even before, to preserve your own before character. Before you rush off, before you rush off. Let me well, I'm you. in the middle of a tournament. It's not because I'm not enjoying it. I thoroughly enjoy Yeah, poker tournament. Oh, you're playing poker? Okay, yeah, well, good luck in that, mate. Cheers, mate. And um, listen, Thanks listen, listen. We'll, we'll, we'll finish here, right? We'll finish on this. Like, like, you've got me all wrong. You think that I, I'm, I mean, we're, everyone who's here is in this because we just have this undying love for animals. A lot of the people here don't actually love animals, don't like animals. They're out here because they don't agree with stabbing them and killing them and doing all these horrible things to them because even though they don't really necessarily love them or like them, they would never put anyone through that knowingly, human or not. Right. I don't have to love you or care about you to not want anyone to do anything horrible to you. I don't want anyone it's to do different. anything horrible to you. You can't say the same thing about humans Why and not? animals, that's Why the not? thing. Because it's in our evolutionary instincts to stay within <laughs> communities and the social aspect I mean, of it. Honest, that's both, how we both actually pretty much agree on the fundamental point that you agree that this that I assume they were being hit with sticks and being gassed. Yes, yeah, yeah. You, you're just saying that the line of morality doesn't go as far as we should never kill pigs. So you both agree that this is terrible. We're closer well, yeah, yeah. together than we are yeah, further yeah, away, yeah, my yeah. friend. Well, listen, what I want you to have a good think about is why do you care about them enough to not want them gassed, but you don't care about them enough to not want them killed? That's it, because I'll leave you with that. You don't need to answer it. Okay. Gonna, I know you're just going to snap back with something no, about no, evolution. Just exactly. have a it's have in our instincts listen. to eat other animals, no, no, no. and I can't contradict them. It's listen. not in our instincts to eat other animals. I don't, instincts don't matter, right? Some people have the instinct to rape. That's a big one. Some big. people have the instinct. That's not an instinct. Some people have the instincts to rape people, but we tell them, don't do that. Don't people, follow your instinct. Don't do that. People don't because have instincts we're civilized. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. It's not do. instinct. It can be uh, urges. Urges is. and instincts are separate things. Go on, what, how do you define? How do you define the difference between those two then? Urge and instinct. Go ahead. Well, I think I think that eating is a is a is a essential part of life continuing, whereas obviously rape is is not. So these are like so there's well, a distinction there, surely. So wait, wait. Well, that depends on who you speak to. Some people would say rape is an essential part of their life because they want to pass on their genetics. But it's not in order for survival. You can have sex. But it is, it is for the survival of their species, the sure. survival of their, their bloodline. They could try and justify it, but you'd never justify it because it's a to. heinous, disgusting act, right? Just the same as killing an animal when you don't have to, when you can eat something else. It's a heinous, disgusting yeah, act. I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but... Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, nice talking to you. I appreciate it, Cheers, man. Take care. All right, Thank see you later. Appreciate it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, there you go. There, in the end, he tried to bring up the fact that we have instincts and urges as a reason to make it okay to kill animals. So he's saying he has the urge to kill, or the, or the instinct to kill an animal, so that makes it okay. I point out that people have urges to do horrible things to other humans, but we tell them, fight the urge, fight the instinct. And they say, no, 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 but that's not an instinct. Well, it is an instinct. Some people have that instinct uh, to, to, do, to do that. Like we said, the, the word, um, which we'll call it grape, as in grape, the fruit. We're not going to keep on saying the other word because uh, YouTube is funny. So some people have the instincts to, uh, you know, to do things, to do some grapes, you know. And they would argue like, well, some people would argue, or at least maybe back in the early humans, that they that's the only way they can continue their bloodline or their DNA or whatever. It doesn't make doing grapes a good thing, does it? You see, so th this natural thing, this, oh, it's natural, it's an instinct, so it's okay. No, it's not. There are lots of things that happen in the wild. Uh, like, for example, you know, our interactions with other animals, other animals coming over to us and trying to sting us, mosquitoes trying to bite us. That's natural. That's their instinct. But we try and stop them because we don't care if it's natural. We don't want to get malaria. We don't want to get dengue fever. Do you know what I mean? This, this idea that, oh, it's natural, so it's good. It's complete nonsense, guys. Complete and utter nonsense. So in the end, you know, this guy on the left said, you know, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. The other guy just bailed out because he had nothing left to say. And, he, and he, you know, you see that moment where he throws up. I asked him, what's the difference between an instinct and an urge? And he's like, mm, I don't even know. He's just arguing for the sake of it. Um, uh, but the other guy seemed more reasonable and he listened to the whole thing. So, you know, we hope that he uh, paid attention and, um, you know, Maybe he actually made a good decision that day. Maybe he decided to go vegan. Right, guys. You guys have been... Oof, I've had lots of uh, semi, semi-abusive comments here. Now I'm looking at the chats. So now is your opportunity to... I'll respond to you if you actually ask some questions. So, 
Noob Gamer says, uh, is it okay to cut my hair from a non-vegan barber? Remember, if I pay him, he'll buy meat with that money. Uh, that's an impossible standard to hold yourself to. Every single item you buy is most likely going to somehow get to a meat eater. You, you can't hold yourself to that standard. FCY123 says, why are you forcing me to not eat animals? We can't just eat what, why can't we just eat what we like? Um, you're on my live stream, mate, watching my video. I don't understand how I'm forcing you to do anything. You can just click away if you don't want to watch. As it happens, you're still here, which is good. Probably means that you've got some sense of uh, conscience. Maybe, you, maybe you're a good person and you're actually thinking about what I'm saying. I'm trying to convince you to do the good thing, mate. I'm trying to convince you to do the right thing. Why can't you eat what you want? For the same reason, why can't people do what they want? You know, there was a serial killer called Jeffrey Dahmer who ate humans. Why could he not do what he wanted to? Why could he not eat what he wanted to? Well, because we don't think that's right. We think that's not fair on those humans. Well, I don't think it's fair on those animals for you to eat them the same way. I'm not saying humans and animals are the same, but I'm saying we are the same in the ways that matter, right? So we suffer, we have mental pain, physical pain. We want to live, we have lives, we can feel joy and happiness. We have families, we have friends, uh, likes and dislikes, etc. We are people. They are people. Animals are people. There is a person inside an animal in their little brain. Personality, right? Animals have personalities. Think about what the word personality means. It's got the word person at the beginning of it. No one turns up a funny face. No one puts a funny face on when you say, my dog, my dog is a little person. His name's Jeff. I love him. He's amazing. He's the best. He's my best friend, right? That's totally fine. But then when I say a pig is a person too, and a pig can be your best friend, people laugh at that. Why? Pigs are even more intelligent than dogs. But that doesn't even matter anyway. The point is, even a little brain as small as a chicken's, these chickens have personalities. Chickens are even people as well, right? They're individuals. So if a little chicken with a brain that big can have a personality, then what does that say about all these other animals and all the feelings they can feel? And so yeah, that is your answer to your question, mate. Uh, oh no, oh, oh, on go its will. There you go. It says, what are your thoughts on gray area topics? Can vegans eat clams and oysters? That's a whole topic for another time, but I would say in short, I would err on the side of caution and not eat clams and oysters. Nobody, you don't need to eat clams and oysters and uh, just the suggestions that they do have some sense of uh, sentience and uh, that they possibly could have uh, feelings and stuff like that. So just best not to uh, eat something else. Do some cows suffer... Um, avid learners asking, do some cows also suffer if not properly milked? Apart from the mother mother milk industry, there was a time when cows, if not milked, would also experience great discomfort and suffer. So ask yourself this question, mate. Why would cows suffer if they weren't milked by humans? Do you think what well, just cows just evolved to be milked by humans? Well, that's a pretty stupid way for, for an evolution to happen. The reason is, is that didn't happen. So the cows that you see now in the dairy industry, these are cows that have been selectively bred by people and also some of them even pump them with hormones so they produce more milk. The solution to this problem is not to keep on breeding more and more cows and milking them. The solution to this problem is to stop paying the dairy industry, stop breeding more of these cows because they, they suffer. Yeah, they can suffer. They have health issues. Uh, they produce too much milk. We need to stop creating more of these cows in these dairy industries. That's the solution. Why can't I eat animals that not being loved? I don't know what that means, mate. Uh, try, try I, I'm not, I don't want to be offended, like, rude to you or anything, mate. I just don't understand the question. Give it another shot and see if we can get to the bottom of it. Um, put, put, your, put my name in, guys, as well, if you've got a question, because otherwise it's hard for me to spot the question. Um, and while I'm waiting for some questions, just uh, to let you know, in, um, oh, yeah, Max is saying, no one gives an F, mate. Why are you saying that? Why are you here, bro? Like, if you don't give an F, just go to a different live stream. Um, but if you do give an F, if you're actually against violence to animals, you're against animal cruelty, then stick around uh, and ask a question, maybe. You could ask a question instead of just being a douchebag. That's an option. It's an option for you. But yeah, guys, um, just after this stream, in about 10 minutes or so, we are going to go and start another stream, but that stream is only for my YouTube members and only for my Patreon members. So as soon as this finished, as soon as the stream is finished, go to my YouTube community tab on my page and the link is right there for everybody who's a member. Or if you're not a member, but you're on Patreon, go to Patreon, the link is right there, okay? So you can get it from my community tab here or my Patreon. And we're gonna be doing a Q and A, an update, an exclusive one though, where it'll just be between us, okay? Just to let you know. Good evening, sir. What's the camera on the cap for? It's not a camera, it's a microphone. And it's good because then it means I can talk this way, I can talk that way, I can talk up and down, and you'll always hear me. So it's a solution to that. 
Uh, by member, do you mean subscriber? No, Croco Shark. Uh, just under this video, you can see the word. It says join. Uh, join, and that's uh, you, where you can join the members only part of the channel. So it's a it's a paid thing. So it starts off at I believe it's one dollar here on YouTube and five over on Patreon. So yeah, um, Patreon uh, is the preferable one because it gives you DMs as well. Uh, that means you can actually DM with me on YouTube. It just gives you access to some of these uh, like exclusive streams and also some exclusive videos and posts as well. And the same on Patreon, but Patreon you also get in DMs like exclusive DMs. Uh, FC says, you are better than other vegan YouTubers. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Please subscribe and stick around, and um, hopefully you'll keep enjoying it. Sneaky Squirrel says, why are animals hunting and eating each other if it's wrong? Why aren't other animals eating plants? Well, most other animals do eat plants, Sneaky Squirrel. Most other animals are herbivores. They don't eat meat. They don't eat each other. Now, there are animals that do eat each other. That's true. You're right. But they do that because they don't have what you have. So you can decide what's right and wrong. And also, you have a body that can survive and thrive and do very well. You can be very healthy just eating plant-based foods. But they don't have that option. A lot of other animals are just fighting for survival. Their bodies are not able to survive with plant-based foods. But yours can. You can. And you can say, do you know what? I don't want to be violent to animals. Um, I have the ability to think about these things and I'm against cruelty to animals. Other animals don't have that. They don't understand cruelty, but you do. You can understand cruelty. And you can also, like I said, you'd be very healthy, you'd be very happy eating awesome plant-based foods, delicious vegan foods, like really cool stuff. And you could be, you could live like that the rest of your life and you could do whatever you want. Be an athlete if you want, bodybuilder up to you or just whatever, whatever you want, be lazy. Don't do any of that stuff, but but you can live a happy, healthy life with without funding all of that um, death and, and violence and cruelty, mate. Cheers for the question, man. Is it possible to stop killing billions of insects and worms and crop farming? Remember, vegan farmers also does that intentionally by using pesticides on lands. I'm vegan too. Um, well, no, that's not. They're not vegan farmers, mate. They're they're absolutely not vegans. The people who are crop crop farming and most of the crops they're growing is for animals. Um, these farmers are not vegan. That's why they are using insecticides. That's why they're shooting animals. That system will change, but it can't change because people don't enough people don't care about it at this point. You're going to get people to care about a mouse or, or a fly before you get them to care about a cow, a pig, a chicken. And the mouse, the mice and the flies and all these animals in crop fields, they're not being bred into existence by farmers mutilated and then killed in slaughterhouses. Whereas that is what people are paying for now in animal agriculture. So I don't think you're going to get people to care about those animals in crop fields before you get them to care about animal agriculture. Um, we need to start there and then that, but yes, that can be improved. And there are people who are discussing it. There's vertical farming, veganic farming, two things to look into. I am going to get some people on at some point to uh, to discuss those things in a podcast as well. Cheers for the question. Uh, if everyone stopped eating meat, what difference would that make other than a negative one? The extra cows alone would make so much more CO2 and carbon monoxide damaging their own environment, says Dragor Lord. Dragor Lord, the only reason there are so many cows in the first place, mate, is because farmers breed them. They won't breed them anymore if people stop paying them to breed them. So if everybody goes vegan, they go out of business, no more cows are being bred. So no, there's not going to be just loads of cows because they won't exist. The cows are not going to be around anymore because farmers will stop breeding them. And by the way, it's a good thing that they're not around anymore because these are not, these cows are man-made animals. They have loads of health issues. They have a horrible life because farmers have created them. They selectively bred them. They've messed with them. They inject them with all sorts of antibiotics and hormones. This, this, these, they're not living a good life. So they need to stop breeding these cows, stop using them, stop stabbing them, stop selling off their bodies. Um, that's and then your your point about the carbon monoxide CO two. Well, it's not going to be the case because there won't there'll be significantly less cows in the world if everybody goes vegan. Cheers for the question, mate. Thank you. Oh, Adam just joined the team as a supporter. Legend. Welcome to the team, Adam. So yeah, what Adam's just done there, he clicked the button underneath that says join. And that's the button you're going to need to click because in three minutes, I'm going to go over to a new Q, a new stream. And we're going to do another stream, but it's going to be a QA and a so exclusively for people who are in the YouTube members team or in the Patreon team. Okay, guys. So what Adam just did, Adam, welcome, mate. You guys are going to need to do if you want to jump over there with me. All right. Uh, we're going to be a, it's a bit more intimate and a, and a bit more of like a focused uh, Q&A with some updates about what I'm up to and stuff like that. And it won't be public. So that's the only way you're going to be able to get it is by joining the team. Okay, guys. Um, 
What do you think about pesticides? We've already been over that one, Croco Shark. But uh, if you're going to hold people to a certain standard, you talk about bodybuilding. If you're going to hold people to that standard, you have to hold them to the standards of, uh, like, oh, never go to the cinema then. Um, you know, never do anything that you like. Never do anything that's any kind of luxury. Live in a cardboard box and just live on the bare minimum because you're going to cause harm or whatever. Um, I don't, we don't hold human rights to that standard. Uh, for example, like if somebody's against, uh, if somebody's against, for example, using slave labor for chocolate production, we'd never say, well, you know, then you should also live out in a forest because, you know, all of the things you buy come from some form of human being paid a bad wage or whatever. So you can't do anything anymore. Do you know what I mean? We, we don't use we don't hold humans to that standard. So, you know, we shouldn't hold um, vegans to that standard either. We've just got to do, you know. We gotta do what we can. Um, Sneaky Squirrel says, "What about the argument that people kill animals to save crops? If there wasn't farms with crops, that people wouldn't kill the animal eating the crops." I think we just went through that one, Sneaky Squirrel. But I'll go through it again. The most crops are grown to feed animals, not to feed vegans. And we feed 80 billion animals a year using crops. So that's a problem for animal eaters, not for vegans. But if everybody was vegan, that would be a significantly smaller problem because we wouldn't need to grow that many crops as we grow now because there's only 8 billion humans, but there's 80 billion animals that are being, um, you know, fed and then killed. So cheers for the question, mate. Uh, if we all turn vegan, then the cows that exist right now won't cease to exist. They'll still be alive and producing the same issues and could breed. Well, but you're talking about a situation, mate, where everybody goes vegan in one second. It's not going to happen. It's going to happen over many years. And as, as the demand declines, as people stop eating animal products, the farms will stop breeding animals. It's not going to happen all in one go. You know, so that, that situation you're suggesting, it's not going to happen, um, obviously. Um, well, it might not be obvious to you, but I'm just explaining it's, it's It wouldn't happen, mate. I don't mean to be rude. Um, okay. Right, guys. So we've got, uh, we're going to head over to the new stream now. So again, one more time, guys, if you want to come over to the new stream, this is an exclusive stream. It's not going to be public. Um, it's more intimate. It's more for really, really for vegans or at least vegan friendly people. Uh, we're going to do some more questions that we wouldn't necessarily do here. Some stuff that I won't talk about necessarily publicly. So that is happening now. So join the YouTube. You can click underneath, click join if you want to join, and then you'll get access to that stream. It's going to be in the community tab. Here on YouTube, the community tab, you go over to the community tab and it's right there at the top, but only for YouTube members. If you're not a member and you don't want to be a member because you don't want to give YouTube money, which is fine, you can join on Patreon, um, but it's still money, but Patreon is not YouTube. So if you don't like YouTube for whatever reason, as a company or Google, you can do it on Patreon. Again, it, the link is right there in the post on Patreon, okay? They're the only two places you can get the link. YouTube community tab, if you're a member, or Patreon, in right there in the uh, posts if you're a Patreon member, okay, guys? So if you're coming over, come on over. If you're not coming over, we'll say goodbye now. Subscribe, guys. If you hate vegans, subscribe. If you're like, yeah, I'm not sure about vegans, subscribe. If you love vegans, subscribe. Because either way, it's a win. If you hate me, great, you get to come and hate me. If you're like, nah, well, you get to find out maybe if you hate me or love me. And if you love me, well, I mean, obviously, subscribe. Okay, guys, subscribe. I will see you all. Uh, some of you I'll see you in a moment. And the rest of you, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.